When stars are questioned The whole thing it unwind Behold the great deception Traversing throughout time do you dare to question? If there's a grip upon your mind Cause at the mere suggestion But there ain't none to see No matter where I let my head turn Seems awfully flat to me Will you The shackles of your mind If you let it open You know there's truth inside it Numbed in too complacent Bread in circus to the end It's time to claim your mental freedom You know it's up to you my friend Searching round for curvature But there ain't none to see No matter where I let my head turn Seems awfully flat to me The shackles of your mind If you let it open You know there's truth inside Will you start to question the shackles of your mind If you let it open You 
Your tribe All right. is here. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I have a little rusty at this. Tried to bury it. <laughs> Greetings. Here, wait. Let me just say hello. Hi, everybody. It's been a while. I'm a little rusty, and I'm using a new platform because uh, who knows? Might have uh, one or two guests pop in today. So, uh, oh, wait a minute. Can you even see me? Yeah, you can see me there. All right. It's all it's all new for me. I think uh, so. So the audio was a little shaky. I, I heard in the chat. Hopefully it'll be better for the, the rest of this stream. Um, yeah, so um, this is just uh, an opportunity to check in and uh, say hello. It's been a, it's been quite a while and uh, tell some stories recount a little bit about my experiences in Mexico and all the stuff that happened after that and um, and hopefully have some fun as well um, yeah I've been kind of reflecting on my role in this whole thing you know going to this conference in Mexico and and being a presenter and just thinking about who am I in all of this? And um, I was thinking about something that happened to me when I was 22 or 23. I was living in Seattle at the time. And my mom, who uh, is an astrologer, I grew up with astrology. And I, I was very curious at that time, like, who who am I? Where, where am I going? What, what am I meant to do? And so I reached out to uh, an astrologer who had written several books that... Uh, I had written, I, I had read, and uh, he was working out of a, a shop in the university district. And I asked him, what, what do you think of my chart? And I sent it and uh, I wasn't looking for a whole reading. I just kind of wanted a, a, an idea about where, where I should go. And his response was very, very clear. He said, based on what I, what I've seen, I think you, um, you should be a, a photojournalist, which I thought was pretty interesting because that's kind of I realized what I've been doing since I started this whole channel. I've just had a lot of questions over the last eight years and uh, about the nature of our reality and, and a whole lot of very unusual subjects. And, um, and I've just kind of been documenting the process as I've gone through asking these questions and, and started looking at things with new eyes and, that's how the channel began, really. And uh, so I thought that was appropriate. So this is uh, this is kind of what I'm what I'm going to do today is just a little photojournalist uh, experience of my experiences in in Acapulco. So this is uh, this is a video that I've thrown together with all the, the different clips and um, and we'll just start with this here. They tried to bury us. They didn't know. We are seeds. They want a one world government, new world order. We want seven billion governments on earth. Everyone's sovereign. And if not everyone, at least you. Join us for Anarchapulco's 10th year anniversary, held in the secret garden in Acapulco, Mexico. Your tribe is here. Break out of the matrix at Anarchapulco 2024. Reborn.
Yeah, so I I don't know about you guys, but I didn't really know a whole lot about anarchy um, and uh, this this idea of uh, ruling yourself before going to this conference. And I wasn't sure what to expect if it was going to be kind of a heavy vibe or or what. But it was anything but that. Actually, it was a lot of people who were skeptical of governments don't think they should be ruling over us or stealing our money and um oh i'm gonna back that up a little bit and pause it there and um yeah they, what i found is that it was an incredibly incredibly positive vibe there were families there people were were very much solutions oriented and uh had amazing things to share and and covered a, a wide variety of topics uh, we'll get into that in a second but uh, I've, I've shared loads and loads of synchronicities uh, throughout the time that I've had this channel and right off the bat even before I got to Mexico uh, I had a synchronicity on the plane so you know got the media uh, station there where you can watch lots of movies and I had a clip in my presentation from the Back to the Future movies, and they had all three of them, and I hadn't watched them since they were in the, the theaters. And so I watched part two and part three, and uh, and let's see if I can, like I said, I'm on a new platform. Hey, Morning Glory, Shiva, welcome everybody. One more quarter, thank you for the, the kind words. Um, Oh, greetings from the Azores. Nice to see you all. Um, let me find this clip. Where is it? Where is it? Ah, it's right here. So I've shown this on the channel before. And um, where to go? Ah, here. You know, Doc, it's going to be a hell of a long walk back to Hill Valley from here. Still, this ain't his plan. After all, we can't risk sending you back into a populated area or to a spot that's geographically unknown. You don't want to crash into some tree that once existed in the past. You don't want to crash into some tree that once existed in the past. <laughs> David Weiss sent me that. Um, so that that was kind of, that that was an awesome thing i shared it here on the channel and i had it in the presentation but when i was watching the uh the movie there's this scene where they're trying to plan out how they're gonna get back to the future because they're back in like the 1800s you know it's the wild west days and they've run out of gas so they don't have any way to to get this car up to 88 miles uh, an hour which is what they need for um for the uh, for the whole time travel thing to work, and so they they realize that they can they can use a steam engine, and then he's got some special fuel that he makes to make the thing go faster. But they only get this thing up to like it, it's got a top speed going downhill of like fifty five, and but he's got this special fuel. Anyway, I I just thought it was it was hilarious that that this whole model that he's that he's built has got this stump right in the middle of it. And I and the person who shared that clip with with David Weiss, I don't think they noticed the the stump later on. Um, but it's just another example of what I think is is truth in plain sight. And uh, so that was on the on the plane ride over. And I can't remember if I was able to I don't I wasn't able to get the picture in into the presentation in time because I was up till 3.30 in the morning <laughs> the night before going, trying to sort it all out. It was a nightmare with the, with the resources on my computer and, and um, PowerPoint. I had a 2.4 gigabyte file that was just killing my system. And I had to redo a whole bunch of stuff just to be able to make the file work. So anyway, that was a, an auspicious beginning to the whole thing. And um, so... These guys met me at the airport, Steve Falconer, Sam Wu, Jack. Um, Jack was traveling with Steve and uh, they, they were fantastic guys. We, we had a nice uh, drink in the hotel room 
And then we're on our way to a restaurant or, or actually, no, this is coming from the airport and a, another just synchronistic moment where we're talking about RKX's work and this whole idea of the 138 year, uh, you know, Phoenix, the reset cycles. And as soon as someone said 138 in the car, I looked to my right and, and the license plate on this car was also 138. So, and, and then comes the camera. This is actually. So let me know, is the sound good with everything here? Um, yeah, Mike Winner, I <laughs> I talked I talked his ear off for about two hours telling him a crazy story that someday I'll share on this channel or another channel, but it doesn't uh, really jive with, uh, with the things I've been covering on the channel. Sound is good, okay. So we went out for dinner and um, video I'm recording. Oh, just had to show this place. Uh, Deep look up. Yeah. So I mean, right, right here, you've got this this Medusa-like character that's cradling a heart, which I thought was pretty pretty wild. And then the name of the place is the L seventy seven. And Mexico City was pretty wild. We rented a car and uh, with, with the intention of driving to Acapulco, it's about a five hour drive. Yeah. And here we are on the highway, <laughs> yeah. random horses. On the freeway. Uh, on the freeway, <laughs> just wild horses. And, and about an hour and a half out of uh, Acapulco, we get a flat tire and you know, no big deal. We go out back. Oh wait! Oh, the photo's missing. Oh, here it is. <laughs> we we go to the back trunk. There's a there's a, a spare. We get a change in about 15 minutes. It's really hot, and uh, thankfully we're back on the road. It was a crazy road. The the um, the uh, it, this is apparently uh, cartel country, and it was just riddled with military guys in, in trucks carrying machine guns and you know it was it was wild and and so we we get the car fixed yeah it, it shredded you're gonna find out why <laughs> so so we get the car fixed in a half an hour down the road we get a second flat in the same tire i mean i i couldn't i couldn't believe it but uh at that point we knew it was probably something with the car not with the tire because you know who gets two flats in the same tire on on a road and unless somebody's shooting out the tire or something. And uh, so we called to the, the conference center because we didn't have a spare and uh, they sent somebody to, to come and come and uh, help us. He had two wheels in the car. They didn't fit the, the car. And just, just by luck as that guy was, was arriving uh, with the, the wheels that didn't fit these guys, the green angels saw us stopped and, and uh, came out to, to help us. And uh, so, uh, so we had no choice but to um, separate at that point. Two of us went with the car that came to help. That was me and, and Sam. And then, uh, then Steve Falconer and Jack stayed behind. One of them, uh, Jack, had to go with the wheels to try and get them repaired. And, uh, and then Steve stayed with the beer and the mangoes at the car and uh, had to two kind of sketchy hours there waiting for, <laughs> waiting for people to show up and uh yeah so then they they hobbled in with the the car finally got it to acapulco and um the next morning we woke up and there was a third flat tire on the same tire so all we can figure is that the axle was bent or something with the drivetrain and then we get to acapulco and and this was about four doors down from our hotel uh you know the hurricane hit there and it was just crazy um the the amount of damage this is on the front side but what was really left the, the biggest impression was the the back sides of the hotels like the front side was facing the, the the ocean and the back sides of the hotels were blown out so they um they they uh they were just it was devastated um the 
I, we, we, I never, I never got to see the city. We, we, I bounced back and forth between the, the hotel and the, the, the center where the conference was the whole time. Someone said, maybe it's a scam. Uh, did you check for a mechanism in the arch? I don't even know what that means, but, but uh, they were telling us, oh, you don't have insurance for this, you know, and, and uh, they tried to jerk us around a bunch. And uh, there were several, there were several letters back and forth that, that Jack and Steve wrote. And finally they're like, we're going to, we're going to dump this car off a cliff or, or drive it into the ocean if you don't come with another car. And, and uh, finally, they saw the wisdom of providing us with a car that actually works, which which uh, we were able to get back to the airport at the end of the conference. But um, yeah, so wind and I, I'm not sure if I guess waves must have hit this as well, but it's pretty uh, leaves an impression. This is the conference center. And uh, this is the day before. They still had so much work to do. It's amazing how much they were able to pull together. And you can see the damage on that building up above. I've got another clip showing more of it. What's up, Yuck? I'm good? Yeah, I'm good. Nice. Really beautiful location. So lush. And unlike here in Spain, all the palm trees had coconuts in them. So far. Liking it? Same. I what it was like before. Yeah. So. Solo con amor. Another heart. So this is the view from the hotel. A nice sunrise. And uh, from from the very first morning, uh, they were doing podcasting outside the the hotel. This is Patrick Henningsen. And uh, a lot of you probably know uh, Andrew Kaufman. Patrick Henningsen's work I, I became familiar with about a week or two before leaving for Mexico. He's a, a journalist, amazing journalist. Uh, if you want really um, good reporting on world events from lots of different angles, I can recommend his channel. It's called the 21st Century Wire. He's, he does amazing interviews and he gets a lot of really top-notch journalists who don't seem to be um, bought and paid for. And, uh, and then Andrew Kaufman is, uh, is just a, an amazing uh, mind with, uh, with his work that he's done through the whole COVID thing. So these are all, uh, are not, not just speakers, but a lot of speakers uh, getting, we're, we're just getting our orientations so we know where things are, what's gonna go down. Just a fantastic vibe from, so from the get-go. anyone who wants to do the test, that's fine, but that's not the official opening. Official opening of this area is 8 a.m. Tuesday. Now we have a wonderful guy over there in a yellow t-shirt. His name is Jack. He is Jack. the scheduler. Okay. I have already where is Patrick Henningson? He's still finishing his podcast right. right now. Yeah, there we go. It's an opening ceremony. Dr. Kaufman, yeah. And this is that that first night. If, if you could get a PhD in complaining, I would have one. I'm real good at that. But I love that the people that come here are focused on solutions they're not just going to scare you they're going to teach you how to fix what's broken it's going to be up to you you have a stake in this yeah so a lot of you probably know who these guys are or at least this guy he's 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 fairly well known david weiss the man the myth the legend and and uh this is uh, uh david martin i believe is his name he's just done an interview with uh with Steve Falconer on the Space Busters channel that's really good about just the nature of reality and how uh, relative reality is. Um, so I can highly recommend his work. He's collaborated with another woman named uh, Don Lester. They wrote a book called 
what makes what really makes you ill and it's like 700 pages i've got a copy of it but i i haven't had a chance to dip into it yet but it is riddled with footnote after footnote after footnote and uh the these two have really put together some amazing work and uh he's he's also got uh, a book or two that he's written on his own as well so can recommend looking into his work. So this is just really, it's kind of telling the, the, the story of my trip. And also I want to really showcase the work of, of these people because they're, I don't know what, what you expect from an, an anarchist festival, but this is probably not it. It was really uh, solutions based, very positive and the people that were there were, were speaking on matters of health, homesteading, you know, um, off-grid living, a lot of focus on law, a lot of people talking about the, the real law, law that is used by the, uh, the controllers to, uh, you know, exploit us and, and make use of the, the system that they created. So a lot of people are, are discovering things about that that are are very beneficial in, in a variety of ways. That's something I wanted to show here is, um, so that if you go to the Anarchapulco speaker page, you can see all the, the, the people there uh, who, who spoke. And then there is uh, replays as well. You can, uh, you can sign up for this. It was a full five day conference. And if you, if you pay for the streams, it's a it's it's lifetime access to it so there's no rush to to get to the get to the uh the streams but i i highly recommend it there's so much great information that was shared there and people brought their best games you know they were short condensed uh presentations that were just packed with with information and where is it there we go so this is uh the opening with um, Dollar Vigilante, uh, Jeff Berwick. He's the, the man who who started these conferences 10 years ago. Me with Topher Gardner. There's an interview with, with him on my channel. And uh, oh, yeah, it's, it's going a little too fast. I'm going to have to back it up. So David Icke did a live presentation. Been listening to him for years and read a number of his books back uh, around 2000. He's uh, always got loads to say. And um, yeah, just some random pictures. David Avocado Wolf. Someone asked, where's the Titans? There's some of them right there. <laughs> And uh, there, this was a podcast. I'll, I'll, I'll link to it. It was a three-hour podcast. Um, this is Curtis Stone. He's got a, a channel called Off Grid with Curtis Stone that um, uh, has to do with homesteading as well. He did a live stream. I, I should have brought my laptop. I would have I would have uh, live streamed from the the um, the conference, but I I didn't uh, feel comfortable doing it on my phone and uh, with without the laptop it wasn't it wasn't going but there were several people who did patrick patrick henningson and curtis did this one um really great panel i jumped in the last half an hour of it i think it's about two hour 10 minute mark let's see i can show that right now where is it here we go i might probably show that clip on the channel after this. <clears throat> Great guy, um, fun fun to talk with him. Uh, I had no idea who he was. I didn't. I hadn't heard of him before, but he's got a very big channel and, and uh, has been sharing stuff for years. So he's another one to, to check out. And these two are absolutely wonderful. This is Adam Biggleson. Uh, he and his brother presented, his brother presented uh, remotely, but um, he's done incredible work. His father discovered uh, using live microscopy that, that the blood is holographic. So you can actually take blood samples of live blood, not, not like what they do when they're trying to fake viruses. 
and uh, and actually see what the blood is doing. And this is what he and his family have been doing for many years. They've got tens of thousands of the most amazing photos where where you can actually see what is wrong with the person in the blood and not not like you might think it's it's uh it's really far out it it, it it's pretty solid uh evidence in my mind that that the blood is holographic as is the rest of reality ben the archivist ben 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 good to see you um and uh this is maria oliva she was also a speaker and she was speaking on matters of health and uh we had a wonderful synchronicity uh surrounding uh maria and uh she she lived in barcelona she's a she's a phd medical doctor and um she worked with manel ballister who was francisco torrent guasp's uh good friend and so so guasp if if you've been watching my channel for for any length of time you probably know who he is he's the discoverer of the the myocardioventricular band it's this the idea that the heart can roll open into one long band and that was discovered by guasp and he was doing dissections for years and years on um, on uh all kinds of different animal hearts but he never had access to human hearts and uh, a doctor in Barcelona discovered his work, and this uh, Menel Ballester is the one who started the first transplant center for hearts in Spain. And so there was a synchronicity around around that because a woman that he worked with reached out to me and uh, wanted me to present to the Friday group, and uh, she was she she was curious about my work and the mountain and she came to visit and we had dinner together and she introduced me to Manal Ballester. Well, it turns out that 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 uh, Maria Oliva also uh, I'm sorry, I'm saying I think it's I think it's Anna Maria Oliva. I'm I'm I might be getting her name wrong. I'm sorry if I am, but um, she uh, she also worked with Manal Ballester. So now I've met two different two different uh doctors who've worked with this this guy who was who was very good friends with uh one of my personal heroes uh, and uh another great synchronicity is that guasp lived and worked his whole career on the foothills of mont go which is uh another just crazy uh connection and also uh another thing about about Wait, I'm just gonna. I don't want to get her name wrong here. Let me pull up, uh, pull up that speaker's page again. Where is it? Too many tabs. There we go. Let me find it. Anna Maria, Anna Maria Oliva. Uh, she did an incredible presentation. All of these again are available if you uh, sign up for the restream. Um, and yeah. What was the, I started to say something else. What was it? No, don't remember. Yeah, so just a, a fantastic venue, really well put together. Uh, there were also workshops. So there were private uh, workshops. Andrew Kaufman did one on law, which was amazing. And uh, David Weiss talking about the you know, earth shape as well. And this is, this is, Curtis Stone, he gave a talk on the the maxims of equity, and this is again talking about law, all all stuff that we should all be learning about if we really want to navigate uh, the the legal system and and avoid exploitation. Just more speakers. <laughs> It was fun to meet Dave again. I got to I got to meet him and get to know him a little bit in Denver in 2018. Um, that's Topher Gardner there, who's presenting. Biochurisma. Got really lucky with the weather. It was it was just wonderful. 
And this is this is Max Egan. This is the the uh, grand opening of of Max Egan's bar. Max Egan, he's been podcasting for years. He's got a channel called The Crow House, which was taken down from everywhere. Uh, I think you know now it's on BitChute and Rumble and all the somewhat censorship uh, resistant platforms. And uh, yeah, it was it was really fun to to. This was where everyone was every night after the after the big the big event. We all piled into the into the crow house. What it looked like. There you can really get a sense of the hurricane damage when you look that way. Let's see, and then this. Can see how lush it is. Yeah. I, I can go this way. Hi, Marjorie. Marjorie Wildcraft. She was one of the speakers. She's a, she's amazing as well. And you can see all the down trees. I would I would guess that at least half of the vegetation was brilliant. Nice food. Yeah, I would guess that half of the vegetation was was destroyed by the hurricane. It was, and and uh, uh, luckily this this area is one of the absolute best preserved, and particularly where the the main stage was, it was untouched. So it was kind of a gift from from the creator. It was meant to happen. They weren't even sure if they were going to do the conference, you know, a few months before. Oh, Shiva Shampoo mentions that the um, where was it? that the work of um, Veda Austin also ties in with the Biggleson's work. And that's true. I mean, she's, those of you who are familiar with Ma Masuro Emoto and the work that he did, you know, with um, freezing water and how it, it reflects the different energies that are directed at it. She's done similar work. That's um, in my, in my opinion, even more amazing, the discoveries that she's made and those tie in, directly with Biggleson's work. So uh, I, I plan on having a number of these people on, on the channel for, for interviews because they've, they've got so much to share and um, they're awesome, awesome people. Max, OG, Egan, definitely OG. <laughs> Nice frog ponds with lily pads, and they make all kinds of noise. Frogs now. The Bigglesons, the, the great. Bigglesen and Anna Oliva. Is that? Fantastic. Here we have Carl, Jack, and oh man, ah, I just I just blanked out. Curtis Stone, um, <laughs> the urban farmer is that what it is? Yeah, the urban farmer himself. I was on his uh, I was on his podcast and I can't. I've just fuck Curtis, Curtis. I got it all on my own. Curtis, <laughs> Curtis. And uh, that was a guy from Australia, or well, not from Australia, it's actually from Canada. And he did a Ducky song. So now we're going to have Gianna is going to come up and sing a few songs. Gianna is one of my partners in this place. 
like when I got this place happening, I did it with the help of four incredible people. One is Gianna, the other is Maria, the two girls behind the uh, kitchen, and the two guys behind the bar, Alex and Grant, who's going to hear me tonight when I give him a mention. Put your hand up, Grant. These guys went be above and beyond. going to say welcome to my good friend Sam Wu. He was he was my well I, I was his sidekick for much of the week. We were each other's sidekicks. <laughs> How you doing? Welcome. Good. Do you hear yourself or or no I got my family in the in the Airbnb in the hotel room. So you might hear some noise. I'll stay mute. Yeah, I'd plug that in. Uh, yeah. So I, I I shared uh, I shared the link uh, with with several of the people who who were there and so Sam, my first to pop in. I'm just, you know, you. I don't know if you got to see the the photos from the beginning. I, I shared our Did harrowing, it? our harrowing, it? our harrowing journey from Mexico to Acapulco, and uh, cool. Yeah, just just doing a little bit of the uh, the recap from the the music and the um, yeah. So I'll just keep going with this. Yeah. How you doing? You good? Yeah, good. We just uh, we were walking around. Prague, trying to find the sunset. And then we realized the sunset was at a different time than we thought. So we went back to the hotel room. <laughs> so. There was a day I would have called you a globetrotter, but now I'm now you're a disc skipper, maybe. That's right. <laughs> All right, let's. I said it to this girl. This is after the alcohol has kicked in. <laughs> that thrill is going away. Steve Falconer, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, so uh, someone just asked um, Brian asked uh, sorry for being so uneducated. What was the purpose of the gathering? This I'm just doing a recap of the uh, the Anarchapulco conference, sharing some photos and some clips, and introducing a number of the speakers that were that were there, and um, just a chance to relive it as well. And uh, yeah, so. Steve Falconer, this this is Biggleson again. He's great on the guitar, and uh, that was that was Max Egan. Um, one of the other nights, David Avocado Wolf was on drums. <laughs> Alex Alex has very sensitive ears. He's he's a conspiracy music guru. Has has just said, "Ouch." 
Yeah, here, here there were some tuning issues. You gotta, you gotta remember, none of these people had ever played together. I think. Yeah, I just wanted to share a little bit of that because the vibe was so great and uh, it was really fun to hang out with with these people. Um, that was uh, Mike Winner and Alex Zach. Uh, Mike Winner is with Alpha Vedic, another channel. If you're not following that one, you should definitely follow it. And uh, Alex Zach, the he's got a podcast, one of the one of the top podcasts on iTunes. It's called um, The Way Forward. And both just incredible guys. And uh, Mike Winner is not only with Alpha Vedic, he's also the um, one of the the founders and organizers of the Music and Sky uh, Extravaganza. I, I've called it a conference. They don't think of it as a conference. He had a beautiful expression for it, and I don't remember exactly how he described it. But basically, it's like a it's a camping family event in Northern California with uh, all kinds of different inspiring speakers and music, as you would expect with the, the name Music and Sky. And so he's invited me to speak at that in June. And uh, I'll share I'll share links to that uh, a little bit later. I'll share them now, actually. One second here. Um, and there's um, there's affiliate codes as well. So let's see. Post that. Oops. Better to do it right away so I don't forget, right? And uh, here we go. There's a link to that. It looks amazing. I'll show. Uh, I'll show a little bit from their website in a moment. Um, yeah, I talked. I talked Mike Mike's ear off for two hours at, at the bar, and uh, he wasn't he wasn't disappointed. Apparently, I was telling a, a very long story, but he enjoyed it thoroughly. Apparently, <laughs> Andrew Kaufman again. Alex Zex, uh, his his presentation was amazing. He it. In 45 minutes, he went through the science um, related to the pseudoscience that is virology and just uh, knocked it out of the park with fact after fact that, uh, that really calls our whole, you know, current mainstream model into question when it comes to um, contagion and viruses and whatnot. So um, that, that presentation was practically worth the um, the price of the, the Anarchapulco restream in and of itself, in my opinion. This is Anna giving her presentation. Marjorie Wildcraft. Um, maybe you can, uh, Sam, maybe you can uh, say a little bit about her if you know, if you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for I years she, I followed her. She was in the, like basically teaching people how to grow food. Um, she's been doing that for many, mm -hmm. many years. So it's my first time meeting her. It was wonderful. Lovely, lovely lady. And gone yeah, down she a few had, herself, so That was fun to, to find out. Yeah, she was, she was wonderful to talk to. I didn't really get into her work at all, so I can't really uh, discuss it 
but um, her, her her channels are whatever it's called the grow yeah, network. You can, or something like that. Go ahead. Did you hear that? It's called the grow network, and she basically yeah, that's right. keeps you. Yeah. Okay. I heard that. So it's just, is it, uh, it all, all aspects of like self-sustainability or, or just growing? Mostly food growing, I would say. And then, you know, there's a lot, there's other things as well, like how to heal cavities, um, foraging, mm. that type of stuff. Yeah. Jump in anytime you want. I'm just, I'm just kind of going, reminiscing, going through the, the things. So if there's anything, just ask me cool. to pause if there's something you, you would like to add. My partners in crime, they were, they were a lot of fun. So, uh, the room, the room got messed up, um, because the, the conference, uh, organizers, they had a list of, of all the speakers in their rooms. And so I was listed as Mike W and so was Mike winner. And somebody saw that and thought it was a duplicate. And so they, they crossed my name off the list. So my room was given away. So I ended up rooming with, uh, Steve Falconer and, and Jack and, uh, Hey, we got another we got another visitor here. Welcome, Matt Presti. Hi there. Hey guys. Hey Matt. What's up, Sammy? How you doing, buddy? <laughs> I'm doing good. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, it's great to see you. I um I, I was about to get to to uh, to you because you're gonna show up here at some point in this little video. But um, Matt Presti, for those of you who aren't aren't familiar with him, is the was it you were the president of the Walter Russell Foundation for many years, right? Uh, about seven years, yeah. It's currently known as the University of Science and Philosophy since uh, 1948. And and for those of you who are, um, let's see, I'm gonna, I'm I'm still learning Streamyard. It's the first time I've used it. There we go. <clears throat> for for those of you who are. Um, not familiar with Walter Russell's work, I highly recommend you look into it. And you can see there, uh, mattpresti.com on the on the screen. Uh, just that, well, maybe you, you'd like to say just a few words about him or, or yourself and introduce yourself. Sure. Um, well, Doc was a polymath, basically. Uh, we call him Doc endearingly. And uh, polymath Uber being uber genius, right? Yeah, he, he mastered all the five fine arts with only a fourth grade education. And he presented a new science to the world of science back in the, the late 20s. And basically, it was a two way motion universe versus a one way heat, death, dying universe. And so you look at anything in nature and start with your own body, it breathes in, right? We've got this wonderful example called the human body. Uh, pretty much everything breathes in and out in a two-way motion. Yet our universe, according to the Catholic Church, is just a big bang exhalation, which uh, sentences the creator and creation to a cosmic death sentence. So I've been battling physics, mainstream physics, uh, since 2010 to, to push his concept out into the world and get more people aware of the man because not only was he a great scientist but he was a master wood carver master horseman he brought help bring ice skating to new york city to the united states um he also mastered architecture music painting poetry and sculpting and uh was just a all-around versatile genius he was known as the leonardo da vinci of the 20th century and worked with his wife for for uh, 18 years at Swananoa, which is a Medici palace, uh, completed in 1912 up on Afton Mountain in Virginia. Uh, everything went into storage in 1998 after 50 years on display. And then I got everything out in 2018 and set it all up in 2019. What and was your connection to him? Why did you, why, how did you end up being the one? Well, I started reading his, I read his Secret of Light book back in, 2008 and it inspired me so incredibly much that I had to I had to learn more about the guy so I ended up contacting people that were still involved in the university and got invited to a homecoming on Afton Mountain back in 2010 and then I was asked in 2013 late 2013 
by then president Michael Hudak, if I'd be interested in taking over for him. And so I started in 2015 and, uh, came on as director of operations and then president 2016 through 2021. And, uh, so I was able to get all the artwork back out on display and it can all be viewed. And I really love the alternative energy generation technology that he also worked on, which is what I'm currently working on as well. So. Oh my gosh. People like this make you feel like it's such a simpleton. Um, well, you it's, made me it's remarkable. Like oh, come on. Come Dude, on after two hours of our <laughs> esoteric discussion, the first night I was there, we won, <laughs> by the way, for your listeners, we won the esoteric conversation award of the whole event. And we had like 10 people standing around just with their mouths open, like what in the absolute hell? <laughs> yeah, we, were just, we were just bouncing, another, bouncing off each other and it was uh, great and then, and then at the end people came up and they were just like man that was amazing you <laughs> we should have had it recorded oh well. i don't remember that, what we that talked about what, what, what we t- <laughs> that would have been stellar uh it was it was awesome um you mentioned the secret of light and that was kind of my introduction to walter russell um I bought a couple of his books, but I've been so busy. I haven't had a chance to dig into them. The universal one is like a brick that's like that thick and big. And, and you, I mean, it, it's just amazing just to look through the, the diagrams, um, the stuff that he, that he showed uh, to me when I, I don't have it handy, but there's, there's one, um, one diagram in particular that shows all the different elements as octaves of each other. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and basically like how, well, I think you mentioned that it's all hydrogen and it just goes through varying stages of what evolution or whatever you would yeah, call it, transmutation. Like carbon, carbon's the God particle, not uh, these quarks and everything else they're looking for. Hmm. But it's, it's everything's trying to become carbon or is dying carbon. So carbon is at the midpoint of the wave in his spiral elemental table which just makes a lot more sense than a 2d um mendeleev chart which begins at hydrogen there's actually three complete octaves of space gases they're called which precede hydrogen which they have discovered some deuterium and tritium are two of those and he predicted those as well and he was never given credit for that discovery he also predicted urium and uridium which became uh, Neptunium and Uranium. Hmm. He was never given credit for that. He also predicted heavy water, which somebody else took credit for as well. Um, what is ironic about him is that the Catholic Church, after he released his Universal One, a thousand copies, 700 to prominent scientists and 300 to major universities around the world, he was contacted by the Catholic Church and warned that if he Re, if he republished or reprinted that book, that the Pope would issue a decree against him. And that mm. meant you would never work anywhere else in the world the rest of your life as an artist or anything else for that matter. Cause the church had a lot of polls. So they really, they didn't like the two way motion universe and not, not even five years after he puts out the two way continuous motion universe, meaning it, it never ended and never began. It's just continual and things unfold and refold back into the space from which they come. So um, the, just five years later, we get this one way, big bang, dying universe, exhalation only, which is why we can't create anything that breathes in for a machine. Everything we use in our uh, machines are all exhalation only. They explode nature versus implosion or centropy, you know, it's the, the balance in breath to entropy. So G- Georges Monsignor Lemaitre, the Jesuit priest in 1931, put out a one-way universe model. And I think that was in direct response to the fact that Walter had put out a two-way motion and they had to take it back to a one-way before people figured out stuff that they didn't want them figuring out. So they basically own the monopoly. The, the whole origin of the universe is, is a Catholic theory Mm. (laughs) and I'm, I've been trying. Yeah. Jesuit priests gave us our current cosmological model. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 
So <laughs> I've been battling that that rhubarb since 2010, and I've gone through a lot of uh, criticism for it. But nonetheless, I, when you you mention people like Alex Zek and those who who take on you know scientific models or paradigms, you know if you can present a better model that works better, by all means, that's that's what's going to win the day out. You know. Hmm. So, yeah, and we were we were talking about the uh, the, the the parallels between Schauberger's discoveries and and uh, uh, sorry uh, Walter Russell's and mm -hmm. Victor Schauberger, uh, you know, because because that's all based on implosion technology as well, the vortexing of water. So right. we 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 were going back and forth about that a lot. I I've listened to on audiobook. There's there's a free one on YouTube, uh, The Secret of Life Light. Um, it's five hours, 55 minutes for the, for the whole book. I've listened to that three times now. It's truly profound. I feel like I, I, it, I feel like I'm getting more intelligent just listening to it. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's really, it's amazing. His work, the, what a, what a gargantuan body of, of work he's got. Um, so I, yeah, I highly sure. encourage anyone to, uh, to look into it if you haven't, because there's a lot there to, uh, to take in. Absolutely. Sam, good to see you, brother. How you been? I'm actually in, uh, I'm actually in Prague right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> Looking What's at some of these, Prague? all these crazy there? buildings with, uh, <laughs> like energy ether, you know, tapped into the ether type. Anyway, I just ah. been having fun wandering around the city on foot. Cool. And, on the bus and just checking all this stuff out for the first time. So, any ancient tree trunks? I didn't see any of those. I mean, they're probably no. we're probably like on one giant one. <laughs> probably who knows? <laughs> <laughs> it's all shitty around here that I've seen too. Right. Anyway, it's been fun. Prague is amazing. I got to see it about twenty years ago, um, but uh, you've you've shared some really magnificent oh. pictures in the in the group. Um, I didn't I didn't have a chance to throw any of those in, but. Uh, it's it's an amazing city, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. So what are you what have you been up to lately, Matt? Are you just you caught up from from the trip? <laughs> yeah, actually, I just I got back today from close to a month in Virginia. I work in Virginia about half the year, so just working on stuff uh, with Universal Power and just off the road, buddy. That's <laughs> I'm kind of just. It was back from Acapulco and then it was straight to Virginia, more or less after a couple weeks break. So um, then I'll be back, back and forth for the rest of the year and uh, just keeping on working, staying busy, you know? Yeah, it's been, it's been a month already. And the, the reason I'm just getting to this now is because I went to California for the first time in six years to visit my family. Oh, wow. um, cool. And so I was there for two weeks and then after that, I got back and I had a very busy work schedule and then had two rounds of visitors. Steve Falconer came here to Spain to visit uh, Alex and, and to do a song with him. And so the three of us were, were hanging out for, for four days. And then, yeah, is that the right, right as I took, song you put out? yeah, I'm going to play that right at the very theme. end. So yeah, yeah. You, you guys I shared that hang around. Yeah, ago. it's an amazing yeah. song. And I, I was... I was there as the videographer and got to be, you know, with them while they went through their creative oh, cool. process. So, okay. so they got all kinds of outtakes and funny clips and stuff. Uh, Alex shared them on his Facebook page, um, you know, clipped a bunch of the, 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 the great moments <laughs> <laughs> together. So yeah. I, I don't have those clips, in, but, I, but I'm going to sh share the song at the end. Um, I've just been going through the... Um, through through some of the photographs here, I'll, sh I'll just continue this a little bit. See what mm -hmm. see what's coming next. Topher Gardner and uh, talked about Anna. Yeah, it's it, it was such a fantastic vibe, and um, there was no shortage of things to talk about people to talk with this was the the um someone got the idea to get all the all the baldies together for a shot 
And this is um, uh, Robinson. What's his first name? Um, uh, to something. He 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 co-wrote Charlie. a book with um, Charlie Charlie Robinson. Yeah. He co-wrote um, a book with um, with Jeff Berwick that was at the decline of the American Empire or something like that. That's one I'm. It's on my to buy list. Patrick Henningsen again. Oh, this I've got to share this story here. <laughs> Another synchronicity. I, I I've got entire streams on the subject of synchronicity on my channel because there's so many of them that that happen and and uh this was a fun one i'm walking down the street from the hotel to the conference center and uh i can't remember if he caught up to me or i caught up to him and we started walking and talking and and um, found out that he was a musician and that he was actually there to perform and he was telling me about um you know his inspiration was during the whole COVID days uh, where he was just incredibly disappointed with all of his childhood music heroes, that there was nobody that stood up to like, you know, where, where were the sixties rebels and seventies, you know, screw the government and, you know, the, the, the freedom fighters, where were they during COVID? They were nowhere. They were non-existent and basically nobody had the guts to speak out, you know, and there were so many things that were obviously, wrong with the narratives that we were being fed on so many different levels and that was long before you know pe people like Kaufman and, and Tom Cowan and Zach and all these all, all these great great people started to just pick apart looking at the science and and, and just you know discovering uh, you know that that things were not as, as we were told and so he he was just totally you know disappointed by by his heroes during this uh, during this time. And uh, so I, I recommended to him as we were walking, I was like, you know, there's a great song that you should hear. Uh, it's called There Ain't No Rock and Roll. And it's all about exactly what you're, you, you're talking about. And he started laughing. He's like, I wrote that song. <laughs> so I'm meeting this guy for the first time walking with him. And he just tells me the story of how he was disappointed with his childhood heroes. And, uh, and, and, I'm recommending a song that he wrote to him. So that was pretty funny. So this is this is the, this is him performing that song. Here. Get the second guitar. Sorry, I just want to say his name is Brad Skistimus, S K I S T I M U S, I believe, and his uh, his channel is called Five. Well, his band is called Five Times August, and uh, he's just a, a fantastic musician. He did um, he did another song that I love called uh, Gates Behind Bars, uh, which was he, and, and he does all his own video editing and he gets he gets the graphics and the, the animation for the videos is just top notch. And the songs are 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 wonderful. So. Listen, the, the lyrics are, are just the best. Listen to this. This is great. No 
Shown in your back. No one stuck around for the protest job. All the stars in the big farmer horse shilling for a check from their corporate shores. All the actors say what they're paid to say while the fans take the blame. All the once cool fools that were me and you, well, they pushed us all away. Cause there ain't no rock and roll, and the blues has lost its soul. All the punks take the man control, and every pop star's body and soul. No, there ain't no. Ain't no rock and roll, and there ain't no vice no queen. Never was a rage against the damn machine. Right. No, there ain't no fighter in the fool, no more rocking in those free world shoes. All the high strong Neil Young wanna be. Yeah, the silence has been hit the men. Right. All the suits lick the boots of the government. What they say they never made. Cause there ain't no rock and roll. And the blues has lost its soul. All the punks keep the man control. And every pop star's body. No, there ain't no, ain't no rock and roll. Y'all can sing along too, all right? No, there ain't no, ain't no rock and roll. No, there ain't no, ain't no rock and roll. The uh, the ones he was playing with are, are a band called Winsome Kind, and they were also uh, performing at the the conference. And I think they're going to be at Music and Sky as well, as as will Brad Skistimus, uh, the you know the, the guy who was just singing. So that's that's definitely a an event to to check out if you're if you're in the region because it's going to be it's going to be a fun one. He's a great artist. Hmm. Yeah, that song I, it just gets so stuck in your head. I, I I love it, and that was that was taken that I filmed that with my with my Samsung, so it's not even good quality. It's just a phone, pretty mm -hmm. decent sound though. I th I think so. Um, and I asked Brad if I could I could play it and uh, and invited him in. I have no idea if he'll he'll show, up. but uh, yeah, that's uh, and it, the anyone who knows my my past with the the hacking history and and gates and microsoft and everything um will will understand that his uh gates behind bars song is is <laughs> is, is a special favorite of mine so uh, anyway this is this is mike winner alphabetic dj winner Yeah, yeah. 
It wasn't a big crowd um, for the night stuff, but the um, but the the days were were packed, you know, for the presentations, which was uh, it was nice to see. This is the this is the 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 end. We're heading to the to the airport at this point. We've got a car that actually functions. Had three flat tires on our way to to Acapulco and the same. And the what same, are the chances? The same I wheel. Mean, <laughs> oh, it's like crap. that's like more than my entire life in one day. <laughs> I've had flats, but never not that many. Um, and then uh, what's happening? Yeah, this this blew my mind when we got into Mexico. I had I, I had never been to Mexico. Um, or actually, I, I was in Mexico years ago, but I, I never saw the mountains. We were we were always in hotels it was for a chiropractic conference and uh, i was totally blown away by the the size of these mountains surrounding the city you can see them sticking out this is me on the on the flight see mountains like that anymore without uh, thinking of trees <laughs> this is uh this is coming into ojai which is my hometown in southern california it's about um it's about a hour and a half north of los angeles first time i'd been there in in six years and um they'd just gotten record rains and the it's it's just so beautiful and green and up uh, up ahead on the road, saw a a big turkey vulture, and I managed to to catch it fast enough, and uh, and snap these shots <laughs> from the car while driving. Never seen one that close. I used to fly hang gliders in in California for about ten years, and I've I've flown in the, the air with with the, the turkey vultures and hawks but never got to see one that close this is the ventura river just pumping it's a beautiful beautiful part of the world i'd never seen it so green So, so Matt, would you would you go back again? Would you would you do? Uh, yeah, do it again. I, I would. I don't know if I would uh, two consecutive, uh, just on account of my schedule is totally unknown right now. It could be I'm really super busy, but I would. It was definitely. I, I can't say enough about the production of the event the kindness of the staff and just really, you know, it shows that they've done this 10 years in a row. They have that experience and, you know, every event is not without its problems, but this one was pretty problem free. I used to work uh, audio uh, for 15 years doing corporate fortune 500 audio. And uh, there's no event that's ever, glitch free, but this one had very few, uh, just the way they rolled with it, the top level production. So it was more than I had expected. You know, I was really impressed by it all. And it was a good time and meeting just so many incredible people too, who are sitting in this conversation right now. Um, and, uh, the memories to get to bring home and the discussions you'll never forget. So yeah, it was just a great time all around. I would love to go again at some point. 
You come into music and sky, Matt? Is there a possibility or not this year? It's probably not going to happen for me this year. I've just got, I've got some deadlines and things I've got to meet um, that we set up. So I'm going to be busier than a one-legged man in an ass kicking contest for the next few months. So, <laughs> you know, but another time then. Yeah, for sure. I love Mike Winter. He's just a great guy. Do you have any, uh, Sam, do you have any, um, any memories that really stand out? I mean, besides the whole event, like specific ones. Yeah. I mean, I, I think what Matt was referring to just the, the quality of people there. I mean, that was the reason why I went, you know, I wasn't a speaker, but I knew that, you know, you guys would be there. And then a lot of those other folks that were mentioned. So I just really appreciate, um, just deeply the opportunity just to spend time in person with, with, with folks of that caliber. Right, Matt. And so For sure. get, it's, 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 a. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, you can't, you can't put a value on that. Right. It's just, and it's fun. So, um, those are my thoughts. Yeah, awesome. I mean, it's one, it's one yeah. thing to have like, it's one thing to have like really, uh, amazing people in terms of intellect or achievements. But the other thing that stands out is that these are just really quality people, you know, people you want to spend time with, you know? So that was impressive to me. Hmm. Yeah, I was, um, you know, the, especially in the, over the last uh, four years, lots of uh, fallen heroes, you know, when it comes to the, the what we all went through in, in the world. Um, so, so having heroes isn't the best idea, but I, I would say if I, if I was going to have any heroes, several of them were at this, at this event, because they're people that are just doing such amazing work and are so brave um, to, you know, stand up to the pressure that, that challenging, you know, major cornerstones of our mainstream narratives will bring. This is my home, more of my hometown. These are the tennis courts I grew up playing on. Um, I just, I just had to throw some of this stuff in. It's, oh, is such a beautiful town and, uh, it, it, it's nicer than I ever remember it actually right now after the rains. And it, unfortunately it's gotten very touristy and the prices have gone through the roof and you'll pay a million dollars for a house that's made of sticks. And so it's, it's not the easiest place to, uh, set up camp but uh it's it's definitely uh, worth worth visiting if you're ever in the in the area libby park one of my old high school buddies is in the chat right now johan and uh send dave weiss a link yeah, i think flat earth dave do that. He's... okay hold on one second here Dun, dun, dun. Where is he? It says he's in the waiting room. What? What wait? Ah, ah, sorry, Dave. It's down. It's, I've got to scroll down. There he is. You weren't on screen. Welcome. <laughs> hey, I'm, hey, Dave, uh, can I'm you hear standing. Us? Yeah, hey. Dave, oops. Can you hear me? I'm there. Yep. You hear me? I'm in. Hear All him. right. Hey guys, I'm uh, I'm spending um, transgender day of visibility in, uh, <laughs> on the space station. Okay. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that's great. Yeah. When you guys Welcome. first heard that, did you go? That's not. That's fake news. That's not real, right? When you heard that, like that, that didn't really happen. My favorite explanation is it's the white hats doing it because they really want to get us all pissed off. So we'll start fighting back eventually. I like that. I'm in. Yeah. Are you talking about transgender day? I, I thought it was transgender yeah. year now. What is no, it? Transgender sensitivity day or it's something? No, transgender day of visibility today. Oh yeah. 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 Today. 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 Yeah. So Easter. be careful. We're on YouTube. So don't, if you're going to show us anything, you know, I'm showing you anything. <laughs> 
(laughs) (laughs) As if they haven't been visible enough in the last two years, right? So, and Acapulco was great. My first experience. And um, it was great seeing everybody. Great meeting you, meeting everybody there, Matt. Um, It was... It was great. I had no complaints. It was so well organized. And I've been involved with lots of, you know, festivals and stuff. Um, that one, they, I think they did a great job. So I'm hoping to go again next year. Was that, it, do I remember correctly? That was your first time presenting live? Yeah, that's I mean, my first uh, time. Live, I'm, live, in, I'm, live in person, obviously. First, first time live in person. I'm usually here with the green screen. You know, where I can do stuff like, hey, boom, you know, change everything instantly. Um, but right. I, it, it worked. I think it worked. I haven't watched it yet. I'm afraid to watch it. I watched <laughs> it. You you kicked ass. You knocked it out of the park, man. It was it was awesome. Yeah. And um, I, I was uh, my question was that, that, that I asked everybody was how many of you and I was careful in the wording. How many of you think we live on a globe in space and like. Seven people raised their hand out of the entire audience. Right? I'm not it saying like, it was more like or, three. I think it, it was like three, <laughs> but there were some people in the back that were like, you know, shit. Uh. They were afraid to raise their hands. Right? Used to be <laughs> flat earthers were afraid to admit it. Now they're afraid to admit it. You know, and uh, and and you know, people have a different view of you know. Many of the presenters, you know, like I think all the presenters except one was. We'll just describe them as globe skeptics. And if you're a globe skeptic, you're on you're on we're on the same side, right? If, if there's like there's something wrong with the heliocentric model, that's all that's all you need. That's it. Um, but there's only mm-hmm. one that uh you know that just doesn't see it. I won't mention his name, but yeah, we can. <laughs> yeah, there were there were a couple that were uh that were not on board with the idea, but uh yeah. Alex Eck was one of them. Alex, was not. <laughs> he's no, the one he's, that ra- he raised he's, his hand. He's one, he's one of the three people. Yeah, he's one of the three people that raised their hand. But um, yeah, no, it was uh, it was good. I hope they do it again next year. It looks like they're going to, um, hopefully. And um, was it? I've I've got big I've got big plans. I'm coming to the UK, by the way. You know that to Winborn? No, when. Windborn at July, June. There's a, there's a, um, here it is. It's, uh, it's June 27th to 30th at, um, where is it? It's, uh, it's in Windborn Manor or something like that. If you go on my website, flatterdave.com, the link is there. It sounds beautiful.uk. It's a four day music festival and, um, it should, it's going to be a lot of fun. Music, truth, Mark Devlin's going to be there. Dave Murphy's going to be there. And it's not Flat Earth, but, and, but Flat Earth is going to take over. Um, or the, you know, the, the, globe, the globe denial is going to take over. So anybody in the UK that uh, you know, wants to come to an event that I'm at, Ian Leahy is going to be presenting there. We're the two Flat Earthers. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a booth for four days that we just talk to people and discuss different ideas and, See what um see what we can come up with. Music, late that, night music, all sorts of. What's that? That's I think that's gonna um, conflict with music and sky for me because uh, I'm. Oh, it does. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, I I had committed to music and sky, and I was like, I would have to leave music and sky and fly straight to the UK. I was like, that's not gonna happen. So you're not that's, doing music and sky. Then. I they uh they I got invited to this one first. I committed to this one first. So ah uh, right. It'd be a lot cheaper to go to Music and Sky <laughs> than fly over to the to the cheaper. UK. What? They're not <laughs> flying you over? Um, they're not. Wow, that's but, dedication. Yeah, you know what? I'm uh, I'm I've been looking to do something in the UK, and they uh they they're they're trying to make this thing a big thing and budget this, budget that. But if uh, anybody that wants to go uses the code Fe Dave, and enough people do that. Um, maybe they'll cover some of my costs, cover my flight, but I'm not, I'm not counting on it, but I think if you use the code FE Dave, you get 10% off and you get put into a drawing where you win your ticket money back, whatever, whatever you bought. So anybody interested, uh, it's fun. I'm just looking forward to being at a music festival for four days, kind of disconnected from the world. So it's going to be great. 
Well, maybe you can stay on longer and come to Spain. Maybe I'll be back by then. Nope, I'm leaving <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> one, one day after the festival. I would love to, but uh, my my summers, I love my summers here in Connecticut because if I don't have my summers here, there's no reason to live here. And so uh, getting me to leave uh, Connecticut in the summer is difficult as it is. So I'm heading back. I Thanks for the good. offer. What's that? I said Eileen McCusick says the same thing about Vermont, how she doesn't like to leave in the summertime. It's yeah, the no, it's the same thing. It's the same. It's the same. Vermont, Connecticut. We're all, we're not too far from each other. So, so that's uh that's all I got to say about that. So, were you nervous getting on stage and actually having a, a real li live audience in front of in front of you? You know what? You know what? I'll tell you. The only time I was nervous was uh, the second flight where we, we connected in uh, Mexico City, and then waiting there, the entire flight was all of the speakers and people going to Anarcapoco, and I'm like. If they ever wanted to try to take out the truth movement, this is the flight to do it, <laughs> right? And I was like, I'm not going to speak that into existence. I'm not going to say anything. The second the plane landed, everyone said the same thing. They're like, oh, that's what I was thinking, but I didn't want to say it. So that was kind. Of, I mean, we were all on there. Everybody, Andy Kaufman was on there, and uh, were you on that flight? You, Mike? Me? No, I came. I oh. came from. Oh, that's right. Europe. You you took the road trip from hell. That's right. Yeah, three flat yeah. tires and. So, yeah. So, was, I mean, they, that was, the hurricane hit, that didn't shut the conference down. And then we had two earthquakes while we were there. We haven't mentioned those. That was interesting. <laughs> that was fun, right? <laughs> there. Riot. Matt, I, I seem to remember you bolting out of the, the uh, hotel at light speed. Man, I was ready to. I leapt from my cot. <laughs> you know, it's like 3.30 yeah. in the morning. I literally landed on my feet like a cat and I was ready to bolt out the door. It, it my, sounded my like a mirror headline fell off. wind. Yeah. yeah. The the yeah. first one was, the, uh, it was during the day, and I was sitting at the conference watching one of the speakers, yeah. and the whole ground just started doing this kind of woo, 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 woo. Yeah. But, but the one, the second oh. one that came in the middle of the night, that was that hit like a bomb. I mean, it sounded it like, was a, like a was like Yeah, bomb. it was like, boom, and the whole wall shook. And I, I guess some people had things falling off their, their that, walls. That was and, me. That, that was the morning of the day I was speaking. And uh, so within five minutes, I had the meme up saying that they're trying to stop me from making my speech. <laughs> and uh, that was, it, went, it went kind of viral in the community. It was kind of fun. But, uh, you know, have an earthquake. Curtis, make him, Curtis make him Stone, meme. prepper that he is, he was like, okay. He's, he, he was sending maps to people and he's like, it's a nine mile run in that direction <laughs> to get, get away to the, the high tsunami. ground, to get away from the tsunami. And I'm like, I'm just going to go to the top of the building and hope, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Find a high, find high ground, climb a tree. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. Well guys, I'm going to have to jump. We got an Easter dinner getting ready hey. to be served. And well, but I'm glad to get to get in here and see you, Sam. It's good to see you brother. And yep. And you. and you, Mike and, and Dave guys, just awesome. I hope we can all do it again. Be a blast. All right. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to have you on my channel sometime. We can talk more Walter Russell because that would be. Uh, yeah. I think that would be interesting to a, a lot of the people who who follow it. Yeah. Follow my, my channel. So. Uh, I'd be happy to for sure. Thanks. Thanks for dropping in. It was very spontaneous and uh, last minute, and so I'm I'm happy. I got I got some takers with my invite. There you go. <laughs> It was cool to see. I, I'm like Stellium Seven. Who the hell is that? It reminds me of this guy I talked to like ten years ago. Yeah, you were talking about years ago, and I was like, it might feel like years ago, but it was just right. last month. Just, you know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and and it came to as soon as I went to your channel through the link. I'm I'm okay. Okay, this makes sense. But, yeah, super cool. Um, well, guys, happy Easter Ishtar to all of you, and. Uh, you know, don't be too much like bunny rabbits. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Until Pat. next time, Matt. All right, guys. Have a great Take day. Care. All right. All right. So I was showing basically some of my travel videos here. Um, let's see. Just showcasing my hometown a little bit.
And uh, have you ever been there, Dave? Where is it's, it? Uh, in California. Oh, it's called Probably Ojai. Not. It's nope. uh, it's uh, about ninety minutes from from LA. This is the main street right there. Cute Any old world Spanish buildings there? Vibe. Nah. Well, actually, you know, I was looking at the post office, which you won't be able to see in this video, but um, I was thinking maybe because it's got it's got you know tower. It's a tower. It's not a tall tower, but I think a lot of these buildings, you know, they were like. It was like the the zeppelins were the, the the taxis of the day, and they would just pull up to buildings, and people would get off and go down, you know. Um, but the the rains were crazy, and and there was a, there were rivers in places I never saw rivers, and there was a video I showed earlier that had a, a rushing river, and then three days later it was bone dry. <laughs> it was just like it was wild, it just came through. Um, cool, but it's it's really nice nice part of the world and then from there oh this was this was an interesting experience um reached out to a, a friend of mine i hadn't uh i hadn't talked to in a, in a few years and uh found out i had been blocked uh on facebook and i and i was like is that by accident or what and he and i never had a single argument we never had any disagreements but during the covid time I was posting stuff that just disagreed with him and and uh he didn't even call me out on it he wasn't he wasn't arguing with me on Facebook or anything he just decided one day he didn't want to have anything to do with me anymore and uh because I'm a I'm a conspiracy theorist and I and I dare to ask questions that that How most dare people you? are you a truth they, seeker are you a, yeah. you want the truth how, how, how dare, dare you? I ask questions and I'm just like and and to have never had an argument with somebody that I'd known for so many years, and then he's just like, we have little in common. I'm not willing to entertain the company of conspiracy theorists. Best yeah. of luck to you. I, I'm blocking this number, and uh, so I, I was just kind of shocked by that. Um, just thank him, thank him for saving well, you time and effort and wasted energy. Well, it's interesting because this is another another friend I hadn't I hadn't hung out with for thirty years, and we reconnected, and we had a great great old time, and so you know, out with the old, in with the new, and uh, yeah, you were gonna say something. No, that's it. I was just saying when that when people like that, I just don't have the time or energy for them. You know, and mm. it's like the it's like the trolls. I don't watch troll videos. I don't watch, you know, all the videos people make about me and I just don't care. That's their problem. Feel free. Knock yourself out. I'm just going to do what I do. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's some you got to let go sometimes. This is, do you know where this is? Do you recognize this? This is right up your alley. What am I looking at? You're looking at Santa Barbara. This is the, the famous uh, spot of the black swan, right? So the, basically these these uh, oil rigs sit on an underwater ridge. And um, if you go to the right here, there's a pier and you can you can take photographs looking looking down this direction. And this is, you know, that the, the famous, you know what I'm talking about, the famous black yeah, swan where the, the horizon yep. is rising up behind them. So that was one of the first things that I that I saw early on that was like, wait a minute. And there was another, there was another video also taken from Santa Barbara where the guy came with his camera and he walked right up to the shore and he set the camera down. So it's literally like an inch off of the water and you could see the water rippling and, and you could see already way too far in that, uh, in that shot. So it was reminiscent. This is, I, I this is the next stage of my journey. I took a train down to San Diego and hooked up with Sam again, and uh, a couple of my old friends, and and th these are just some amazing um, rock formations that I saw that reminded me of trees. This is a friend I hadn't seen in thirty years, and his son. Some there's some there's some old world architecture for you. Look at that. This is what I was talking about before the um, the buildings. You know, there's there's lots of photographs of these these uh, zeppelins just pulling up to these things and parking. And I think people just got off and, and, and went What do down. you think about this <laughs> idea? What do you think about this idea? So you got all these Zeppelins. Think about it, though. During a storm, you know, you can't dock a Zeppelin to a building. It would just be crazy. 
I think that this world is intelligently designed and it comes with a steady, you know, rain isn't just random heating and cooling and, you know, water cycles. Rain is intelligently delivered and there's breezes, there's sea breezes that are for transportation, for sailboats that are just in place. And that there really are never storms until man started screwing with the weather. It's kind of like damming up a river. Yeah, you can divert it for a while, but eventually it's going to break through and try to equalize itself. So I think that all these storms are all because of man manipulating, holding back that river of weather. Um, and if they didn't mess with it, we wouldn't have storms. We'd have rain and, and just the rainy season and you have your breeze and it's all very predictable. It's all just perfect seasons. Things change, but you wouldn't have unpredictable storms. And I think that's all man went made by, you know, the spraying and, the um, you know, the, the, the chemicals and the frequencies and everything else. I mean, here in America, when they switched to digital from uh, analog, we had wild tornadoes, wild, crazy tornadoes off the scale and that's you know that's the frequency but i don't think there used to be storms and i can't find uh you know i can't find much evidence of storms i mean in the 1800s did you know any storms famous storms other that's than a the good question shiva shiva's asking in the chat he says were storms mentioned in literature in the distant past i don't know the answer to that question i'll bet uh, i i haven't I'll found any yet jason Bashirs would have archaics he would he's he's got a lot of knowledge <laughs> that guy has got a lot of research that guy i don't agree yeah. with everything he says but I, he does make some interesting points that's for sure yeah well earlier i was taught we were when when sam and and uh steve falconer and jack picked me up at the airport in mexico city um we were we were talking about about archaics in the car and we brought up the 138 year reset or the the phoenix event you know that's what he's identified in his chronology his study of chronology is that every 138 years there are these events that occur that where there's either regional continental or worldwide destruction and so right at right as someone said 138 i looked to the car to the right of us and it and it had the number 138 on the on the, on the license plate isn't there there's something with uh with the ship that hit the bridge here with 138 something there was like a lot of 138s in it and i forget what it was i think in jeff's last video he he showed a meme with all the one i think it was 138 that's interesting um You're from baltimore the, yeah the, the ship in baltimore there's something about 138 the dramatria like everything was 138 in that story I think it was 138. Oh, wow. I could be wrong. Maybe it was 183. I don't know. I think it, I'm pretty sure it was 138. I got to check now. In Berwick's last video, um, he shows a meme of of all of these gematria coincidences with that and the writer and the, you know the the whole name of the ship and everything. So hmm. interesting. I'm not sold on the timeline of that reset being a pattern because to know it's a pattern, you'd have to live through two of them. I don't mm -hmm. think anybody here now has lived through two of them. Um, but time will tell, I guess. So this was another fun synchronicity. When I went to meet with, uh, with Sam and, uh, some other friends that, that we had dinner with, uh, we parked the car and then, um, uh, people, they were, they were like, where, where are you? And I, I knew the street name and then I, I didn't know the number and I looked up and, and it was seven, 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 uh, which, which was which was really funny and we were we were at uh we were, there were seven of us at dinner and these are some some of the friends we found proof of a globe here oh yeah that globers have done that They're like if you look at the thickness of the water on it it's deeper than the deepest ocean in in scale and <laughs> like what are you talking about um the funny thing was when I when I went to um, take the train back, I was on train number seven seven seven. So we met at seven 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 seven. Here, here's the ticket. <laughs> yeah, back to uh, 
some more from California. I want to skip ahead here and uh, get to, um, it's just all footage of my hometown. Mount hey, I, um, I, on, I only on. got a, I only have, I only have a few minutes. So I wanted to just yeah. stop in, say hello. Anything else about Anarchapoco you want to talk about? I got like five minutes and I got to, I got to run for, for our celebration of transgender vision day. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, I just, uh, I thought it was a, it was a stellar move of mine to, uh, to request to follow you at the conference, uh, because I knew it would be a full house after your presentation. So I, you know, I didn't, didn't want people going stellium seven. Who's that guy? And, you know, sing to an empty crowd. So, but, um, it was, uh, it was awesome to, to hang out with you there and, and, um, look forward to the next time. It's, uh, hopefully it won't be another six years. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, was, it, it was, yeah. uh, it was amazing how, I, I mean, I couldn't find a speaker that wasn't, you know, anti globe and, uh, Oh, that was pro globe. I mean, I couldn't find a speaker that was pro globe, and the, the audience. I was like, I was like, where are all the freaking globers? I was kind of disappointed. I was like, damn, I'm preaching to the choir here. But um, yeah, you thought it was going to be more of a challenge than it was, huh? I thought it was more than half the people. I thought ninety percent of the people would be. You know, I was like, wow, ten percent. Can you believe ten percent are flat earthers? It was like ninety five percent. Yeah, I wonder how. I wonder what the number is right now. Like, how many you know closet flat earthers out there? There's, they're they're there's becoming closet eight. globers now. Um. People are being closet globers because <laughs> it's embarrassing to be a glober. <laughs> it it the, the narrative has totally flipped. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah it it is. Yeah. And as they say, once you go flat, you don't go back, right? Because still say. still can't seem to come up with any convincing information <laughs> yeah yeah well thanks right. for thanks for dropping by I really, uh, it was, it was you fun. It's, for, it's your first time on my channel actually i think i, mean, we, I we think shared, so man you shared streams before some yeah. at some point um i'll 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 invite you back and and we can uh reminisce about uh about 2018 and uh the conference there and i've got some great clips that people have never seen and uh, cool. A lot of stuff, a lot of stuff to share, and uh, and it'd be fun to to have you have you give a, a presentation as well, perhaps for for those maybe maybe are... maybe so. I'm ready. I'm working on another one. I'm working on next year's Anarchapoco one already. I've um, just been waiting for you to get polished, you know, because like it was kind of <laughs> rusty there for a long time. I mean, <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, what are you talking about? <laughs> what, what have you What have you done now? Over a thousand interviews. What's your? Do you have any idea what, 1200, what the number is? Twelve hundred since, since 2022? 2021. 2021. 1200. You're, you're, you're a machine, man. Yeah. Well, according to some you wanna, people, you want to plug your app. You want to plug your app with the strangest every, name ever? Everyone, <laughs> just go to flatearthdave.com. This is actually the Mac version right here. And um, it, it, that's going to be available. I keep saying next week, but it, hopefully next week. We're just some tiny little bugs. We're working on it. But I'm, I'm adding lots of pictures. Like like uh, people are like, where's that comparison of Elon Musk's rocket? So you can just type in Elon. And no, oh, there it is right there. Bam. <laughs> Here's uh, oh, cool. uh twice. Yeah, so you can you can you can find anything. And when someone's like, what about the moon buggy? I'll you know, just type in moon buggy and there's my favorite picture right there. Right? $38 million in 1970 and 37 million with inflation. <laughs> uh you can get this bad boy right here. Hmm. Right? I mean, just the, the absurdity and uh, things like that. People wake up to simple, simple memes. And the other thing is the the video search. Since YouTube, you know, makes it impossible to find videos, now you can find everything. You just click the video search button, and um, any any video that you're looking for that's a good flat Earth video is probably probably in there. And if it's not, it will be it will be added. And um, so you can find all of the greatest videos. Like what was uh, you know, what about uh, twenty one questions? So you just type in twenty one questions because um, you can't find it on YouTube. 
but you search mm. 21 questions and there it is there there it is three three different it's on three different channels um my my favorite part of the app that i use the most is the 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 frequently asked questions you know the yep. you can show that cuz yep. cuz uh you know a lot of times like having to go through and pick out a particular video to send to somebody like hey this is you know you asked about eclipses or you asked about this you you click on on one of those tabs and then it right. brings up playlists and these are all the videos that you won't find if you're just searching you, you know won't find any of them they're all yeah, hidden yeah. They're, yeah. you know what's funny is after you watch them all they'll be in your immediate youtube history but then search your youtube history for flat earth and none of them will show up hmm. Interesting. That's the only hmm. topic that'll do that. Yeah. So they're they're they don't want you seeing the stuff, but um, it uh, it, but the playlists are great because you can click the share button and then then like if they're asking about uh you know boats going over the horizon or whatever, you just like mm, there's a whole bunch of videos and most of those videos are short. I mean, there's longer ones and there's documentaries, yeah. but lots of little short videos that that drive the the points home. So. And this is a yeah. new page, a new page. I have this star, the star button. Um, it brings up, these are epic flat earth creators uh, that are on TikTok. They're on YouTube. They're on uh, Instagram, other, uh, you know, uh, Matthew, he's on X, um, AKA Twitter. Uh, and, and, you know, so if you're looking for new stuff, boom, go over here. And I'm just building this now. This will be available when the new update comes out. And um, there's all sorts of stuff on there. Um, and then show, of course, show them the blue, the blue dots. I would yeah, make friend. you full screen, but I'm not sure how to do it. I'm, I'm new to StreamYard. All right. I don't know how to do it either, but, um, here's, uh, here's the UK right here. Um, these are, these are the people in the UK that have, that, that are on the friend finder. So yeah. So I mean, there's people. loads and loads of people that have the app that aren't act. They're not turning on the friend finder feature. So those yeah. are the people that are brave enough to connect with others on this subject. Right. And for those of you that are worried that it's tracking you, one, you don't have any, you know, you can put no, just a fake email address and not, you know, a different name. It doesn't matter. But um, your phone is tracking you just so you know, <laughs> it's tracking your exact position. This by default puts you within five miles of where you really are. So if you're afraid of being tracked, get my app. Get on the friend finder and then they'll be like, wait, is he here or is he here? They're going to be confused because the app just puts you in the general area unless you tell it to be specific. And uh, th the greatest thing about that is, you know, the, a few years ago, you know, or in, in now people are like, you know, um, I, I found flat earth. My family thinks I'm crazy. I can't talk to my friends. It's kind of lonely. I'm like, just check out the friend finder. There's somebody in your town. And then you literally you become best friends. Every blue dot, every blue dot you have more in common with them than probably your best current friend. That's not a flat earther. Right. And, uh, it, it's, it's working, it's working great for that. So. Well, Spain so, is very sparsely populated with blue dots, but I've watched uh, the, the numbers in this region double in, in the last year. So more and more people are, are finding it. Right. And, uh, and, and then it's also, you've got a feature for meetups as well, right? Well, that's coming. That's, uh, the, oh, that's the coming. meet. Yeah, so so on the friend finder, you can go in and then um, I could set my radius, right? If I set my radius to uh, 50 kilometers, right? And I'll save that. And within 50 kilometers, there's 380 people. So I can, or 340 people, I can send a message to all of them at once. Hey, we're having a meetup here. I've created a group in the comma chat. Um, you know, join that for more information. And then, you know, we did it. We had like 80 people show up. Uh, it was crazy. And so, um, and then I'm also going to have, a, which is coming uh, after two updates from now, where any user can go in and create a meetup. You know, it's going to be a form, fill it out. Where is it? When is it? You know, add a photo, um, all the details. And then there's going to be a button that's just a meetup button. And you could scroll through um, by location or by date, and you can see all the mm -hmm. meetups. And then also, you'll be we'll be able to set it um, if a meetup was is within five hundred miles of you or whatever um, that you'll get a notification. Hey, there's a meetup, you know, in this area, so people will all know about these meetups. So rather than you know 
trying to send Mark Sargent, uh, you know, hey, Mark, can you make a video for me about, about the meetups? This will be everyone on the Friend Finder. Everyone on the app will have access to your meetup, and you can update it um, and, and make it whatever you want. I think, it, that, I think that's going to be a super powerful feature, but it's costing thousands of dollars to make it and time, right? So mm -hmm. everyone that thinks I'm, uh, I was accused of being a multimillionaire with properties all over the world. <laughs> The opposite is true. Okay. <laughs> I have no properties and I'm not a multi, I'm not even a millionaire. All right. So it, it, it's, 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 it's so amazing how people just make up crap about anybody that, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the story is. So I just do my I, own thing. I had some I, people say something similar about me and I sat down and I, and I looked at, you know, lifetime uh, earnings on YouTube plus, the, the occasional donation and and I and I came to the conclusion that I was if I added up how much I made and all of the hours like I put in I, I averaged, I averaged less than a dollar an hour less you're, than a dollar an man. hour that's the it's like I'm I'm don't come to me for financial advice yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, so that's it. Anybody well, that uh, anybody that wants to, uh, you know, you know a show that I should be on. Hey, this is a good podcast. Ever talk about flat Earth or not? They're anti whatever. Um, email message me. Go to flatearthdave.com and and send me a message. Give me the details and help me get on these other shows because I like not preaching to the choir. I like going on shows um, that think never heard of flat Earth or think flat Earth is the dumbest thing ever because that's what we want. We want new people. We want new people. All you flat Earthers. You're already in the club. Help me uh, find yep. other flat earthers to bring in. So, yeah. Otherwise, you're just singing to the choir, right? So, yeah, and, and singing to the preach, choir is important. To the choir. Preaching, preaching, preaching to the choir. Preaching to the choir is important yeah. because you, we all learn and we get better, so we can go out and talk to other people. Um, hmm. Someone's asking about the. I'm get. It says, uh, thoughts on Bitcoin. Someone asked about Bitcoin. I think that. I think that cryptocurrency has a, it's not, that's never going away. The question is, you know, I think privacy, privacy coins are the way to go. Um, I think Bitcoin will go up higher and higher, but you know, it's based on the dollar. The dollar goes lower, Bitcoin goes higher. Is there any difference? So that's a, that's a, that's a whole nother topic. So it's definitely stood the test of time and weathered many storms. The question yeah. is who's behind it. And is it just a, a well, um, what is a, a bait and switch for an ultimately a central, well, central based digital currency? So, well, I, I don't, I, I think that maybe that's what they did. That's what they intended, but it got out of the bag, just like the internet. Internet was made by DARPA. We're on the internet right now. So we're supporting, you know, the secret military or whatever. Um, no, it's out of the bag and we're using it for good. We crypto, Bitcoin, yeah, that's a that's a surveillance coin, but it is the foundation basically right now of crypto. There's other ones that should take over, like the real Bitcoin, which is uh BSV. S is in Sam, V is in Victor, but which is you which you can use, but I think that the privacy, they didn't see that privacy coins were going to be coming. Like I can pay somebody in Monero and it never, no one will ever, 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 ever know about it. So, you know, stuff like that, I don't know, figure you're it out. Familiar, you're familiar with the panopticon, you know, that term? I do not. It's like, it's like a prison where they have a pillar in the center and all of the, all the cells are, are, are around and so yeah. from the pillar in the center, you can see into all the cells simultaneously. So it's basically like it's the it's the prison version of Big Brother. And it occurred to me yesterday that that we're you know, we already live in the panopticon. We're all carrying our little portable panopticons around with us for the most part. Everybody. Absolutely. And uh, so, uh, you know, and, and as we've seen with Snowden, if you can believe any of that stuff. And, you know, there's been so many reveals uh, about the degree of, you know, uh, what do you say, intrusion into our private lives. I, I mean, and everyone's clicking it away anyway with their terms and agreements. So. But the last thing, and then I got to run, is uh, um, Anarchapoco, those guys, most of the guys that work there don't even have bank accounts. They don't use any money at all. They're all, you know, they they pay people with crypto. You can pay with crypto. And, and you know, it, it's, 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 
it's very functional. If everyone adopted Monero tomorrow, all the governments in the world would die. They'd, they'd be gone in a split in a split second, right? As I, I I always say, if you know they created the globe, and if you play on their ball field, you got to play by their rules with their money, right? If you get off their ball field and get off their fiat currency, um, they lose complete and total control. They have zero control on us unless we're on their ball and using their money. If we just fucking woke up and stopped using their money, it's over. It's over. We don't even have to take mm -hmm. them down. They're gone. They're gone. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's, you know, every time you buy something with a credit card, a couple percent goes to the bank. And the next time someone buys it, a couple percent, and, and that money just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And, and so cash, you give that to somebody, and it, it, it well, obviously it can you know, lose its value through right. inflation, but you know, those fees aren't there. And, and so I, I buy, I pay for everything that I possibly can with cash. And I, and I buy from little stores that are owned by normal people, not, you know, multinational corporations. And, and no, I, got, did, I, I love everyone these, did I love that. We wouldn't cash. be in this. No, 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 I'm with you, but you know, cash doesn't work for, you know, overseas transactions and getting stuff. You need another way to send, send money and just getting out of the banking system. Um, there is a benefit to it. You know, I understand all the controversy, but, you know, the worst controversy is banks using using their fiat currency. We're doing it every day. So people that bitch about Bitcoin are just using their credit cards and their ATM cards and using the fiat currency and supporting that whole system. Why don't you support another system that isn't connected to the government, doesn't, isn't connected to the banks, right? It You know, they're like, Bitcoin is a government psyop, whatever. Fiat's a government psyop. It's worse. Okay, it's 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 absolutely insane. Government uh, is a psyop. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing, right? <laughs> Government is all in your mind, and uh, when you disconnect, uh, it, it's fantastic. Wait, wait, before you go, we got oh, we boy. got the, oh boy, we got somebody joining in. Hey, uh, Curtis, yo, yo. Hey, welcome. Curtis. Hey, boys. Because I'd like it. you to know, on my face, wall, man. on my wall, I have a chart with the fastest way to high ground, just in case. Fuck yeah! <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> I told I told speakers underneath it. I told the story of you sending out maps. This is where to run to. <laughs> That's right, man. <laughs> I'm prepping for you guys. It's, it's you only covered. nine miles. <laughs> yeah, I got you covered if the shit hits the fan. Yeah. If anyone at the conference would be doing it, it would I would expect it to be you, right? You're the absolutely <laughs> off grid self sustainability. Yeah, We're just Dave was. I was just sexy. listening a little bit. I I've been listening for about ten minutes, and uh, I like what you guys are talking about. Dave, good to see you, brother. Sam, good to see you. Steve, hey. Mike, not Steve, Mike. Yeah, thanks for the invite, Mike. That was cool to see that this morning. Well, it, it was. It's. I'm glad you're here. It's fun. It's fun to talk to you again. And, and uh, Curtis, yeah. that was your first. That was your first Anarchapoca, right? You've been invited a million times, but it's the first time you could break yeah. away from the the farm. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Nice. I'm, and I'm. Uh, I hope to see all you guys down there next year too. I'm going to see Sam at Confluence. Are you going to be there, um, I, Mike or I, Dave? No, I'm, I'm not going to be at Confluence, but I'll be at Music and Sky in June. Oh, cool. Are you when going to that? When is Confluence? No, I'm not. Confluence, Confluence is, is this coming week on Thursday. Yeah. Where? Sa Texas. Uh, well, close to San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> oh, I didn't even Band know about Bandera, it. Bandera, Texas. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know about it. So, we're Dude, we're going to be right in the eclipse. It's we're going to be watching wrong. NASA shoot those rockets at the, oh. at the shadow. <laughs> yeah no kidding that's crazy it, it's not the, is it insane the, they're shooting three rockets right to see what it's like in darkness or shade i yeah. i think they're literally trying to hit whatever the eclipse they're trying is. to figure out what the hell's there that's what i think yeah too. Mm -hmm. right and then yeah. uh and then at the same time they're powering up cern and that's going to go full power on the eighth it's, it's crazy <laughs> isn't like, that insane i hope well, I, I just home, i just learned know? i just learned yesterday that like Eight, eight of the planets are going to line up I saw that at, at the eclipse also. What? Get out of here. <laughs>
I'm going so up to Buffalo, going up, up to Buffalo, New York, <laughs> six hour drive. And I know it's that the chances of clear skies are minimal. You think they're just going to chemtrail it out so nobody can there, see? I saw I saw mm-hmm. a chart on the news, um, mm-hmm. chance of visibility during the eclipse, and everywhere except like Texas is total overcast. Hmm. Yeah. Tell the well, truth. Dave, you know you 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 know you're going into your billionaire bunker. That's that's yeah. your plan. <laughs> no, no, multi-millionaire <laughs> bunker, not millionaire bunker. Multi-millionaire yeah, right. on my many right. properties. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> haters are gonna hate no matter what so man it's crazy how people hate on the flat earth thing so much i can't get my head around it because i haven't like i haven't come out and made any claims of i'm this or that i don't feel like i need to i don't care i like all you yeah. guys i like flat earth dave what well, why, why do i have to this whole thing of pick a side it's so annoying because it's uh, the thing it's it, it it's another hoodwink to me in that they're just trying to get the the um intellectuals into these compart these compartments like climate change does that um the war you, you know your stance on israel does that flat earth does that too but, and it's but like, here's the thing so annoying because it's flat, like flat. how can you not question the moon landing whether you're a flat earther or not how mm-hmm. can you not see that, that is insane and all the other insane things that nasa does to me it's just like right. why why is it so but, bad that people are questioning the whole thing Curtis. when there's so much bullshit yeah, Curtis, ahead, you, you said you said that uh, you don't you don't have to take a stance, but a gun to your head is the Earth a globe? Definitely not. Okay, it's, that's I, it. I think, it's like, I think the thing that came out of the, the anarcho was globe. You skeptic, don't have to take a stance, right? Yeah, I'm not, you don't I'm have not to take a, a flat Earth. That. No, but I don't. Yeah, I do I'm, not accept saying. any of the fucking bullshit that they've told okay. us because it's that's it's it. obviously full of holes and lies. That, that's that's the only thing that matters is getting off of their globe lie. Get out of their globe exactly. lie. Get back to nature. Mm-hmm. You're in nature. Yep. You get your feet in the I'm in ground. Nature. I can right? see it. Yeah, yeah. And and that's that's what that's what matters. Now, what is the earth? You know, hey, talk to Presti. He's got a whole nother idea, right? Exactly. And yet, exactly. And and there's so many different things. That's all awesome. We need to talk about all of it, but we're not mm-hmm. on a ball, a heliosatanic ball flying through an infinite space vacuum. Dude, the thing right? that really tripped me out last week was the moon was out during the day and the Whoa. sun, I could see it, was over here. And the <clears> the light on the moon did made no sense with where the sun every, was supposed to be. And I'm just sitting here and, month, I, every month. and I showed my wife and I'm like, isn't that surreal? Like this does not make any sense based on what we're told. And I'm observing an inconsistency in, mm-hmm. in what I can see. It doesn't line up with what I witness in nature. It's crazy. Yeah. On the last on the last day of the conference in Denver in 2018, I walked out of the conference center and I looked up at the moon and I, I observed exactly what you're talking about. Because if you've got the, the, the curve of the moon and you do a, a perpendicular line, the sun should be coming from you know that 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 direction. Yeah. It was off. It was off by 45 degrees. I filmed it. I'm not going to go looking for it, but I've got it on my phone. That 45 degrees, like you know, it, it's, the, the the sun should be up there, and it was down over here. And I'm yeah. I'm like, does this make any sense? <laughs> you know, it doesn't like, make any sense. So that's that's the thing. You know what? What I'm realizing is that because I've been on only been on Twitter for about six or eight months or something like that. I I, I took a long break from social media, but I'm on there sharing stuff that I see. And any time that anything gets posted that is even remotely associated with Flat Earth, the bot accounts just surge the post. And they just and they just troll and say dumb shit and don't make good arguments, but just call names and, and post memes. Uh, so I don't know. It's like it's like when you're over the target, the, the bot accounts come out. You know, that, that's kind of what I'm experiencing. A hundred percent. I I, I think it's it's a false dichotomy. I saw early on exactly. that that you know they they're trying to pit the globers against the flat earthers, but neither you know I I always saw the model as as probably being beyond our comprehension ultimately, and that yep. you know I, I I latched on years and years ago to the to the the toroid as a, as a kind of a I don't know the master shape you know that that oh there you have your your globe. And your flat surface, <laughs> and a reason that the compasses point to the north. Yeah, here we go. We get, and we get our 
aurora borealises and all these things. So I think I think it's you know it's beyond the beyond. It's far more far out than we can comprehend, and we can't get outside of it. So what's the point of you know squabbling over it? I, I think globe, globe skeptic is definitely the, this is the way to Dave, go. Yeah, the, the, what Dave is sharing here is exactly what I saw not like yeah. maybe a week or two ago. That's and exactly what I saw. My wife and month. my kids, and we're just going. Yeah. What's going on here? That makes that, no sense. The, the, the math ain't mathing. No, Dave. What do you think that? What? 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 What, what does that explain to us? There. What, what's your theory on that? I, I mean, just the whole idea of how the moon is lit. I mean, when you, when you look at uh, at the moon, um, it, why is it why is it so bright like that? I mean, th first it doesn't line up, so the whole heliocentric model is off. But um, I'm trying to find a, an image, I have the um, the moon. Why is it behaving like a light? Right? Why why is it like if you if you put the the sun on a on a on a bright um rock is that going to light you up can you read no, by the light that's not, coming not, off not that at rock all. No, right this is a observable. light this is yeah. a light in the sky yeah right and uh and so that that alone like here here are some shiny there you go immense spheres at in the middle of the day how come they're not casting light casting exactly. my shadow behind me exactly is there right? a different special kind of gl and, glowing soil on there or something? And, on the and we're right next to these things, right? Yeah. The moon is a quarter of a million miles away. So that light would be dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. It wouldn't even be this bright. Yeah. And, uh, and look at it. It's, it's literally, you can read, it casts your shadow on the ground and yeah. then the whole cold well, light thing. So what is the moon? Yeah. I don't think anyone knows. And I think it's deeply connected into um, the, the removal and deliverance of souls here on earth. That's just me. That's my opinion. Um, I think it's, it's full, that's why when there's a full moon, there's always weird shit going on. Esoteric yeah. stuff going on. It's a big soul yeah. harvest. Huh? Right. Yeah. The inverse yeah. square law of light. Every time you halve the distance, the uh, intensity should be four times greater. Right. So, so if it's 236,000 miles, a hundred and what is that? A hundred and, Oh, it's ridiculous. It would be it would, it, it, four it, times it's, brighter, it's like 60 times, 60, brighter, four than times the brighter, 30, four times right. Yeah. By the time you get to the surface of the moon, in order for the sun's light to reflect off of the moon and be bright enough to read a book by uh, during the full moon, <laughs> it, it it would be so bright. It'd be thousands, if not millions of lumens. Uh, yeah. yeah someone said I think I, we calculated once it was like 60 <laughs> times brighter than the sun. You can't even imagine what twice the sun's brightness is. Can you imagine something twice as bright as the sun? No, no, you can't even imagine it. And the math, the math says uh, that's what it would have to be. You know, it, it, it's, it's crazy. And what the fact the that I could, good. Oh, I was just going to say, I, well, I wanted to kind of just slightly change the subject, yeah, but it's still on flat earth. What's the theory of what's at the North Pole? Because you, you, you've seen that clip of Justin Trudeau where he's like, when I went up there with my father, I sure felt special. You know, you know the one I'm talking about? Yeah. Like there's some there's some special castle up there that's the I don't I don't know. I've I've seen these old maps that show this like big castle in there. What do you what do you think that's all about, Dave? I don't know. I mean, you guys have seen that vortex in the North Pole, right? The, um, the, there, there, you know, there, there, some Russian guy years ago filmed, I'm trying to see, see where I have it, um, filmed the, like this vortex in the, in the North. And of course I can't find it right now. Um, so I don't know. I mean, there's the, the, the North needs uh, exploring, like, just like, uh, the South does. But there could be a whole a whole civilization there. I mean, the, the stories of boats going in there and warmer waters and the magnetics mm -hmm. pulling the nails out of the boat out of the wooden boats. I mean, there's crazy stuff going on there. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Compass's point there as well. Going back to the moon, since you have it on the screen there, you know, the one of the big ones for me is the temperature differences between moonlight and moon shade. I mean that makes no sense whatsoever in our in the model we've been given that that moonlight would would be absorbing radiant heat in some fashion. It, it, I mean, 
Theory Apophysis, Ken Wheeler, uh, he's got a video on his channel where he's got a very expensive uh, infrared camera. And I've worked with that same camera when I was in Sweden. I was part owner of a computer company that that we, we incorporated those cameras into our assessment software so that we could use them for chiropractic, for looking at, at where people have pain because inflammation increased heat, right? So we had one of those and I got to work with that camera directly and they're very, they're, you know, they're accurate to a 10th of a degree. Well, he's, Ken Wheeler's going out on a full moon night into his yard where there's, there's tables and chairs and you can see the complexity of, of everything, but it's all in color because it's infrared and you can see the, the yeah. temperature range. And in that video, there were temperature ranges of as much as eight degrees difference between moonshade and moonlight. I think he went and into moon that. Moonshade is, is warmer. Whoa, look at <laughs> yeah. that. Hey guys, yeah, so I'm, I'm simulcasting this on my YouTube channel. Oh, nice. Oh, cool. So there's another, I got 85 and climbing in there. I, when, when I, when we came into StreamYard, it gave, I've never used this, but it gave me the option. Do you want to simulcast this? And I just clicked it. And there we go. There's 85 people and growing in my channel too. Isn't that cool? Wait. Oh, so, so cool. this, this is allegedly um, filmed from years ago of the North. And this is, um, another of filming of it right but if you zoom in you see this mountain sticking up through the clouds far out and there's um i gotta find it there's um if you look at the wind charts like if you go on um my app my app actually shows it sometimes you could see that the winds are break. there's something that's diverting the winds and this mountain is supposedly taller than everest right and and it's uh you know they say the north is the rupus negra or the black rock Right? Who runs the world? BlackRock. Uh -huh. And um, who knows? I don't know. I, I want the right to go explore, but you know, absolutely. Who knows what's well, the, going on the, there? The wind, the wind map that you mentioned, th that area, you can see flow around that point, just like a rock in a in a river, right? That's Where what I'm talking about. You've got a laminar flow and then turbulent flow after it. It's uh it's pretty far out. And then that yeah, that I can't remember what the website is that you're on there, but it's interesting. The winds aloft. Also, when you look at the jet streams on a globe, they make no sense. They're like zigzagging all yeah, over yeah, the place. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that. And then yeah. when you look at the azimuthal equidistant there, the pizza the shape, uh, they're concentric circles that are going in opposite directions. So it's like the further out you, you go out a bit and then, you know, it's just it, it makes way more sense on on a sometimes disc. you sometimes you can zoom in here. This is the test version. It's supposed to fill up the whole frame, but of course it's not right now. Um, Sorry, folks. This is my first time using StreamYard, so I don't know how to make it full screen so you can see that better. But this is uh this is showing the winds, and sometimes you could you could find that mountain that, that's diverting the winds. That's suspicious, don't you think? Yeah, don't you think? <laughs> The time zones is another one that's a real crazy yeah. when it's on the globe. It just it, all these going around this island and all this stuff makes no sense at all. You had in your presentation in, in Mexico um, the this island. What was that little tiny? It was like a little tiny island that was worth Car billions and billions of dollars. Carabati. Tell, tell people about keep, that. They, they keep funding Carabati with billions of dollars because it's a very important trade route. But um, I think that it's a trade route to the outer lands. But again, we don't know. There's there's tons of... Uh, did I get into the whole Carabati things with the boats going out there? But just speaking of time zones real quick, there's 19 time zones in the north, 24 in the tropics, and 32 in the south. Does that make any sense on a globe? None. None. Right? That sounds to me like a flat earth that they wrapped around a globe, right? It should be like aren't sections in an orange, perfect, you know, north to south, 24 sections, but it's not. So. Yeah. And then up uh, between Alaska and what, Siberia, Russia, uh, there's also two islands that, that are right next to each other that have like what is it like five time zone differences between them or something? So no, no, it's, it's, they say that there's a 20, 
hours difference, but it's not 20 hours difference because the date line's there. It's three hours difference. And it's three hours because the time zones are all all screwed up. They're all uh, nonsensical. Um, it's perfectly explainable um, on how they hide everything. If I show you, um, what was I looking for? Uh, I have that, the time zone. Um, where'd it go? Antarctica. There it is. So if we go to here, one second. Um, the time zones, here we go. So this is the dateline, right? And so you're talking about the islands up here. This is three and a half time zones here. So who knows what's <laughs> going on right here? So it's if you so have somebody funny. here so and somebody right here, or somebody like say there's an island right here and right here, you can say there's a 23 hour time difference because it's a different day. No, it's not. That's an arbitrary cherry thing. Noon is where the sun is. Midnight is when the sun is on the opposite side of the world. That's it. Right. And so there, there are your time zones. No, but that makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and, and totally people, people say, people say, you know, the, you're, you're married to the, to the, um, to the AE map. Um, I like the AE map. I think it's the best, best map that we have, but wherever the sun is, it's noon. Like right now, Curtis, are you in California? No, but I'm on the same time zone. 12. It's, in, it's noon right now. It's noon right now. And the sun's right yeah. there. The sun's right, right there. there. And and yep. it's it's not directly above you. It's it's a little south. Yeah, for me, it's, it's a little further, south. It's, it's further and, south and it's, than it is those guys in California or Sam in California. Coming, and it's coming closer to you. Uh, in June, it'll be this close to you. So it'll be much higher in the sky at noon. And then if yep. I waited until the sun was over here and I called my friend you know, in Sydney, I'd say, where's the sun? He'd be like, it's right above me. I'd be like, what time is it? He'd be like, noon. So there's something to this map. Dave, well, what do, what do you say to the guys that say... Um, one of the criticisms is that in the winter, in our winter, when the sun's lower in the sky, if it was further out on the map, that Australians and New Zealanders would experience the sun moving faster because it would be, it would be so, tracking more area, right? You know what I mean? It, it does move faster. That's the thing. Because think, think about this, and this is hard for people to get, get, get their minds around. So your amount of daylight is all dependent on your latitude and the topography, because like if there's mountains at west of you, it's going to block the sun at the very end of the day. So it's going to get darker a little faster. Okay. Right. Um, so when the sun is going around the Tropic of Cancer, it goes around once every 24 hours. And so it's going slower when it goes out here, it's going faster. Okay. Yeah. Fact. Right. If the, and so, in the in our summer, I'm in Connecticut. Our days are longer. Our twilight is longer, right? In the summer, in June and July, the yep. sun will set. The sun will set, and it's light for another two hours. Yes. Now, why is that? The answer is because the sun is moving slower in a tight circle. It's moving slower and going away. And when it's far enough away, I'm over here. It'll 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 take all of its light with it. So. When the, when the sun goes out south, farther away, lower in the sky, we have shorter days. Okay. And it, the transition from sunset to darkness is much faster. That's just a fact. Same for it's you. True. Yeah, it's, it's observable, right? But if the earth yeah. was a globe, as my transition from sunset to darkness is getting shorter theirs would get longer because they're it's coming down to the you know the the tropic of capricorn on the globe is the same circle as the cancer as cancer on a globe it would be symmetrical so their days will be getting longer which they do um but the transition from sunset to pitch black should get longer but from june to december it gets shorter for everyone on earth. And from December to June, it gets longer for everyone on earth. Wait a second. I, 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 I yeah. gotta get my head around that. I'm, you're losing so, me on that one. So, 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 so if you, if let's say you're in Australia and I don't care what the date is, doesn't matter. Right. And the sun sets and you're like, okay, it's dark in 25 minutes. It's pitch black in 25 minutes. And that's in, uh, that's in uh, December. No, let's uh, let's say whatever December because it's okay because well whatever whatever it is it's unique for your area 
But because the sun is running away faster, it gets, the transition is faster. Okay, the transition from darkness, but it should be opposite. As it's longer for the north, it should be shorter. You would in the expect south. it longer, to be opposite, it, right? It would, it would have to be symmetrical, but it's not. And you right. know, as the sun is going speeding up, the transition for everyone on Earth is faster. There is places in the south at certain times of the year when the sun sets, it's pitch black in five minutes, and that's because of their topography, their latitude, and the sun's running away, and mountains in the distance literally just block all of the light. Um, but everything looks like it's a horizon, a horizontal eye zone. And it just runs away. All of this, here's the problem. A lot of flat earthers that are really good, that have worked their brain muscle thinking about this stuff, really have a hard time understanding this fully. So you really got to look into it and work it. But um, Globers, they can't follow this at all. So is this a good proof? It's hard because Globers won't even understand it, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, the transition from sunset to pitch black gets longer as sun, the sun approaches ca Cancer, and it gets shorter for everyone on Earth as the sun approaches Capricorn. Shorter because the sun is running away faster, longer because the sun is circling slower. Right? And then people people think that, um, well, if the sun's going faster, the day the, the, the they would ha would have a shorter day. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Let me show you. So, if um. Right. If the if the sun goes around like this, right? Let me. I gotta find. I have a dome. Hold on. I have a glass dome. Where's my glass dome? Dave, uh, I'm getting your green screen set up. I got inspired uh, after we <laughs> talked. And I ordered a bunch nice. of your gear. Nice. Um. So, so I got a right here. I have a glass dome just sitting on a white rug, and I'm moving a light across. Now, if I was making the light go in a circle, and if I made it in a small circle around the top. Everyone inside there, you would still have your half of the radius. You would see the sun rise and set. Look, the sun's gone. Now I'm bringing it back. It'll just appear. It just appears like it appears on the horizon, and it moves along. And then if I made a bigger circle, you'd still have the same 180 degrees of seeing that light. Even though it's going faster, it's going the 180 degrees is taking the same amount of time. It's a 180 degrees on Capricorn is a longer route than 180 degrees on Cancer. But the, the viewer from inside the dome is going to see it for the same amount of time. It's only when the sun goes beyond the horizon that its light goes away. And that's because it's running away at whatever speed. I got to I got to come up with some graphics. There's a really a, a I'm, good I, I'm still having a hard time getting my head around it cuz I think I I think it just needs it's it's hard with all this because none of us really all we can see see for certain is that there's flaws in the conventional logic, the conventional science. But it's yeah. so speculative when we get into the realm of this is what it is because globers can't prove their uh Th their evidence any more than flat earthers can because all they can do is present stuff that isn't by them one thing i like about the the flat earth thing in general though is that it's going into this hard science of observable observable science whereas so much of conventional science is not observable like the greenhouse effect they tell you that there's a greenhouse effect but i can't observe it anywhere in nature i'm a farmer and i use greenhouses and i've been into greenhouses that pump carbon into them but I can't see this. I can't observe this alleged greenhouse effect. You know, right. so it's a, it's a lot of stuff like that where you're just like, if I can't like, observe it in nature, it's hard to understand. Like, like atmospheric pressure adjacent to a vacuum. Exactly. That's that's a, how how, did, how has anybody proven that? You can't. You just have to trust the science. You just have to trust the experts, right? Gravitational gradient. Yeah. I I think I've I've heard Dave. Uh, many times, you know, he, he it's like he's got the app and he's using the azimuth for equidistant, but he he has admitted many times he doesn't know exactly what the shape is. Like you can't get outside of our our construct in order to verify it. And the people who claim to have done so are are provable liars. So I I think you know it's it's basically the 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 globes are always like, well, where's your model? Show us show us your model. We can predict eclipses and we can do all these things, but 
they they don't understand just like the most basic logic when it comes to if you're asserting something and you're presenting a model and claiming that's the truth and someone is debunking that <laughs> you know they don't have to present something else that functions in order to shoot down your you know your theories so it, it's you know you don't have to present a, a functioning model to debunk a faulty model that's my point. no exactly yeah exactly hey guys i gotta go to lunch uh, but i thought right. i'd just I'm right. make I'm a little I'm cameo out too. and uh, I'm out too. i appreciate the invite all right it was, it was great thanks for dropping by curtis right. it was a lot of fun and and same, yeah all same right to you dave and and see you. Uh, you can see you both. until until see next sam. time sam and i will keep going here because i got a little more right. to share. have fun bye boys bye. take right. care bye. see some curse <laughs> So Good Sam, one. any thoughts? You've been quiet for about an hour now. Someone, <laughs> someone, I'm in, someone in the chat. It's because I'm in my that? with my family in the Airbnb here, so I'm trying not to disturb. Ah, the thing. got you, got you. Sorry. Someone, someone's like Sam is so quiet. I'm like he likes to listen. <laughs> I do like to listen. That's true anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was fun. It was like a little Anarchapulco reunion there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Um, let me see. I, I can't remember what else I have here to show. Anything? Anything? Thoughts cross your mind on uh, on all stuff that was being said? I mean, I, I I I always appreciate when, like it was like Curtis was saying. At least at least for us globe skeptics, we are trying to, you know, use, you know, like a zetetic. Like we're actually using observation. To try to make some sense of this stuff and i you know especially after the last three four years of COVID nonsense it's nice to be able to just use your senses right not just to have to trust the experts so i mean that 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 always stands out to me um and i i don't feel like i need even myself to have to take a position i do think like you said it's a false dichotomy um i'm good enough at just saying i'm a globe skeptic you know and then still just observe i mean i i, I every day when i'm out here in the world i'm just looking at things i'm like oh that can't be right you know all the everything it's not just the shape of the earth but it's like all these buildings that i'm looking at in Prague right now it's like that door is too big <laughs> you know why'd they make it so big and what are those little spires on those buildings you know just everything i think it, it's it's fun just to challenge everything at this point that's the way i look at it Try to yeah this it scientific method used to be based on scientific inquiry <laughs> thought so <laughs> yeah. that's what i was taught in school anyway yeah. and you know, it's it's amazing how many people get get triggered when you just start asking questions about observable reality and, and things that you can mm -hmm. actually point at and go, why is this that way when we're told it's another way? And, you know, they 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 lose their shit. You know, it's uh, it's yeah. pretty, pretty interesting to, to see how how triggered they can get. Um, so let me just show you here. So after coming back from California, I landed back in in the town went back to work and uh did a little hiking and and then met up with these guys <laughs> so did you know you you knew steve came came down to visit us yeah i knew he was going to be there yeah it's great yeah yeah so um he came down to hang out and uh to work on a song that they um that they had been collaborating on. I think the lyrics were, um, were Steve's. This is a buddy of, of ours, Howard. Um, and hold on, somebody just sent me a message. I want to make sure it's not something related to, I don't even know where it came in. I heard a little bloop. Anyway, um, so yeah, we had a, a great time, got together and, and, uh, had some beers, some smoke, and uh, they uh, they played played the the. It's, they're just amazing, both of them, and I'm I'm gonna share it. Have you seen the song they did together? This is not. Uh, I, <laughs> I have to I have to clarify this picture. This is not him praying. <laughs> this is him doubled over in laughter because of a song that we collaborated on that is just hilarious uh so he he and steve did a a song that i'm gonna i'm gonna play here in a moment um 
uh, several several other channels have played it. It's been well loved by by many. But um, at one point, we were out having a drink, taking a break, and uh, talking about these, uh, you know, the 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 globe defenders and and uh, how how they can be. And um, it, I I blurted something out that that ended up becoming a song. So <laughs> I, I don't want to give it away yet, but it's it's uh, it's going to have a lot of people in stitches and probably offend a bunch of people as well. But so he's literally he couldn't we were laughing so hard he couldn't support himself anymore and he had to get down on the ground. So it was a good good time. It was just four days, and it was literally nonstop. I had to work one of those days, and uh, and then they put out the most amazing song uh, together there, and they got it. This is him listening to it. Uh oh, where's the, ah? Here we go. All right, I don't want to blast people's ears. Let's play this one and. Uh, this is this is conspiracy music guru Alex Michael with um, with Steve Falconer of the Space Busters channel. He's done amazing work. He's a professional musician, but he's also a documentary filmmaker. He's done videos that have been seen by millions of people. Um, he's got um, a series called Kung Flu and uh, a farewell to virology in three parts and uh, I, I highly, highly recommend Steve's work, and he covers a really broad spectrum of topics. So let's uh, let's just listen to this song here. Four, five, six. No, you don't care what they're gonna do. You don't like worrying about things that are bigger than you. While your husband and children are sent off to war You hang up your flag, miss, don't ask much more You think your side is winning, but you don't know the score There aren't peace in the East, we are the best in the West We don't reason very well, wearing bulletproof vests it ain't money that's power, it's knowledge that's king. Better open your eyes, sir, they ain't the same thing. You don't have either, and that's why you're down. They ain't never gonna change, while your head's in the ground. They don't want you going anywhere except six feet underground. I believe in those dog lying wolves on the screen whose words you believe in whose pockets are green while you're green with envy you guess it's okay long as everybody else is getting stepped on the same way you think you have freedom but you'll wake up someday so they tax you and drug you and work you to death They defeat you and cheat you until your last breath Then they poison your body and waste all your time Then they pull on your strength, but it's all in your mind You think you make choices, but you're just last in line they be churching you, schooling you, ruling you through Selling you, telling you what's good for you to do They abuse you, confuse you, and use you each day Then they paralyze you, sterilize you, that's how they play When you trust them, you lust them, you do anything they say Then they make you their pet, cause you sign your name away Think you have freedom, but you'll wake up someday, but still you play. Yes, you think you have freedom, but you'll wake up someday. There's just no way. You 
think you have freedom, but you wake up someday. Where did we go? There we are. Which button do I press? Ah, it started over. Still with me, Sam? I'm here. Sorry. Just trying to All right. mute out the room noise. Sorry. Yeah. So let's see. That's pretty much everything I wanted to share to today. I just want to show this. Um, event and um, let me post again a link here to it there's a promo code for a discount and it's uh, it's bound to be an amazing event um, definitely I had I should have had this ready to go but um the gathering 2023 24 lineup here we go this is this is going to be their sixth year and um i'm kind of jealous i didn't get to go to previous years but bear lando he's uh he's mike winners uh what do you say uh partner in crime for uh, Al yeah. Alpha Vedic, uh, great channel. If you're not sub to that, they've got some of the best content on the internet, in my opinion. Uh, so these two guys are just a, an incre incredible tag team. I've not heard of uh, Rynette and uh, Eileen next, McCusick was, was she, was she in Mexico or no? She was not in Mexico. She, she did run for governor the last political cycle. Not that that matters, but she was a mayor of, I believe it's Nevada City. Um, anyway, mm -hmm. she's a she's a big activist type, um, and she's actually I think is currently involved in potentially using legal maneuvers to get the chemtrailing stopped. At least here in California. Anyway, she's a fun person. She was at Music and Sky yeah. before. She's an alumnus. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Eileen McCusick. I, I she's in the the Friday group, but I haven't had a chance to dive into her work at all. Maybe you could. Say a few Biofield about tuning. That. She's she's uh, 25 years into working with uh, tuning forks and using them oh, both as a diagnostic tool, but also as a like a a way to help. I don't want to say cure, but you know, as a as a healing modality, I guess. Um, the whole thing's called uh, biofield tuning, is what she's basically invented that system, and she has all kinds of practitioners okay. she's trained all over the world, actually. So. Um, the what is it? The Interverse Inner um, Universe podcast. You talking about Chance? Chance Gardner. He does that as well, right? Did he yeah, he's a, he's a practitioner trained by Eileen. That's correct. Ah, okay, all right, yeah. yeah. So that it's an interesting uh, subject for sure. And Amanda Vollmer, uh, she's uh, the one and only. She's uh, amazing. What a dynamo! She's everywhere, doing everything all the time. I don't know how she does it, um, but she's uh, done loads and loads of work with. Um, she was part of the, the end of COVID, uh, and uh, she uh, produces all kinds of natural uh, healing remedies and, and uh, is a, a truth, truth uh, fighter extraordinaire and not afraid to uh, speak her mind. Uh, Alex Zek, he, he's, he's awesome. The Way Forward podcast. Uh, I met Sophie and Eurasimos in, in Mexico. They were really wonderful people. Uh, also, both of them were speakers at the conference. I don't know Melissa and Steve, Paula Pratt. That's no Melissa Sell. Melissa Sell and her partner. Melissa does a lot of uh, German new medicine stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and Don Lester I mentioned earlier. She, she worked with um, – oh, shoot, his name just slipped my mind um, – I talked about him before david um, parker yeah david parker who um who just who was just interviewed by um by steve falconer on space busters mm -hmm. i was listening to the first half of that uh before 
yeah. before doing this live stream. Yeah, he. I met him. He was. He was. He was a really nice guy, and yes. and they uh, they worked uh, together on a book called uh, "What Really Makes Us Ill" or "What Really Makes You Ill." Joel Schaefer, uh, wonderful shaman, and uh, he's he's uh, remarkable as well. Justin yes. Leslie, this is the guy who's been doing the uh, whistleblowing on Pfizer and on the O'Keefe Media Network and showing how O'Keefe buried stuff that he was trying to expose about, about Pfizer. And that is just, um, he's done some amazing stuff. He's got a documentary out and uh, was just recently interviewed by, who was it? Um, Alec interviewed. Oh, oh, by Alec, Alec, yeah. Watch the uh, way forward uh, interview with Justin Leslie. That is amazing, what he what he did and what he revealed. Really brave young man. He's only like twenty five, super bright. And then Adam Biggleson we mentioned um, with the holographic blood. Mm -hmm. So already, and this is just a, I guess the first wave of speakers. There's going to be uh, others as well. And I I played the five times August song earlier mm -hmm. in this in this stream. Really really great song. Um, he's, he's a really talented artist. Winsome Kind, we're also in, um, in Mexico and uh, put, you know, did some beautiful music. And the others I haven't heard of, but um, it's gonna be fun. So come, I posted a, a link in the, um, in the notes and uh, it'll be fun to meet some some of you, Adam Biggleson is in the house. Wait a minute. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to oh. text. <laughs> you guys there? I just saw you. I just saw you there. Yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. Adam. Good to see you. I've been I'm talking, like text, talking about text, you. Texting. I'm like, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I'm texting Sam. Hey, it's me. What's up? I'm sorry. You're not. You're not the first. I haven't wanted to have my my um, my notifications on, but um, the thing is, I have. <laughs> It's a small screen with StreamYard, and and when you get four people, the fifth one goes down, and so you've got to scroll down. So both Dave Weiss and Curtis Stone were were like, "Hey, I'm here. You gonna let me <laughs> so in?" Funny. No, was, I'm not gonna let you. <laughs> joys of technology. Yeah, I was texting. I was saying, "Oh, I sorry, I missed your your text earlier today." And I clicked, and I thought, "Oh wait, you're live! Yay! Awesome! <laughs> nice to see you guys. Even oh. even better. Yeah, awesome to see you again. And Perfect time. Voice and yeah. yeah, I played a little bit of your you were playing uh, some music. I, I did some video clips from Max's bar and uh, oh, oh the shame. Talked, to, talked very briefly about your uh, yeah. <laughs> It was, I, I told people, it was a bunch of people who never played together. So give them a break. You know? <laughs> yes. No, but it's a, it, it, it was fun. Definitely fun. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I, and I mentioned a little bit about your family's work, which is absolutely amazing. Um, you know, talking, I, I, I wasn't able to describe it very well because I, I haven't seen enough be, beyond your presentation in, in, in Mexico, but maybe you can just, Tell tell people a little bit about what you did, or what or what your what your family has has done, and, and what well, my family has done crazy things. Good to see you, Sam. By the way, yay! Uh, and we're all going to be at Music and Sky. Is that true? Yes, awesome. I I saw your name there. You were, I just I just said it, and then you were there. It's like <laughs> yes. In Swedish, they say "speak of the troll." We say we say "speak of the devil," but in Swedish, they say "speak of the troll." So. Nice. I don't know. <laughs> I'd rather be a troll than a devil, I guess. Right? <laughs> cool. Definitely. Anyways, yes. Good to see you too, Sam. Um, so my family's work. Dun, 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 dun. We we do the holographic blood. Um, hours of fun for the whole family. Um, the drop of blood, we're using the dark field microscope, but not doing live blood analysis for those of you guys. Can, can you just explain to people what a dark field microscope is? Because mm -hmm. most people are probably not familiar with that. Sure. It's a different type of microscope. What happens with the typical microscopes are bright field. So you put the slide there and then the light goes right through the sample. So ours dark field, the light doesn't go straight through the sample. It's actually kind of bounced off the sides in a way. Um, so it's one of the elements. So it's kind of illuminating the area around the sample. Yeah, yeah. There's only so much detail I can go into that one. You got to talk to the mm -hmm. physics teacher about it, you know, or the optical guy. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, the simple experience is this is how holograms are made. You're splitting a beam. You're seeing an interference field, and we see interference fields in the body uh, on the slide, and the microscope splits the beam, so it gives us the elements that we need to 
see things that you don't see with the bright field microscope. Oh, the micro, I didn't understand that part. So the, because I basically to, to make like people who've seen holographic pictures, you know, where you can cut a piece of it and it's got not a corner of the, the picture, but a smaller version of the whole picture of, of degraded quality that's done by basically you shine light and then you part of the light you deflect off to the side and then it comes back and that creates an interference pattern which they capture somehow on a on a you know a photo surface right right and that's that's how you make a hologram so it's the the microscope is doing something similar Yep. In the body, everything vibrates at its own frequency. Everything is awesome. It's this beautiful symphony. And if something's out of balance, it changes the frequency, which then creates that interference field, the disturbance field. It's kind of like dissonance in music. It strings out of tune a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, it's kind of like bats and dolphins, echolocation, bouncing energy off things. They can see things visually. Um, so same idea. The microscope is kind of unique the way it does that with the light. And it's really interesting because you get these microscopes that have a turret where you can basically switch from phase contrast to dark field to bright field. So you keep the sample there. And when you see the holograms, you go to bright field and they disappear. So it's uh, it's it's like magic in a way. Is that a good way to describe it, Sam? Yeah. So that <laughs> you showed you showed some pictures where they were patients who had injuries or diseases and and you're literally like say they had a broken hand or broken arm or something or 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 an old injury that's you know healed but not healed properly and is blocking some flow in the body that that's actually showing up in the blood in similar to veda austin's work with the freezing the the water where yeah. where it's it's imprinting you know it's just showing it's like it's almost like the body is pointing the way and saying pay attention to this yeah that's exactly what it's doing the body's trying to communicate and if you listen you hear these things you know it's the type of thing where we have been taught to not trust our gut trust our instinct you have to appeal to the expert for these things you don't know you're not a doctor but the reality is you know your body better than anybody you know you're an expert in yourself so if you listen you hear these things and we've done this before where we've looked at someone's blood we show them all these images and they kind of go well i i knew that it's like, yeah, but you didn't know how it fit together and you forgot about this piece of the puzzle. So the mm -hmm. reality is if you're really conscious about what's going on with your body, you don't need us to look at your blood. And all mm -hmm. we really do is translate what your body's trying to say. So there's a point in time even where I don't look at my blood, not very often, because I've done it enough. I know what's going on. And this is the way we work. We're here to educate people, empower them. We see your situation. You see your blood. There's your, your, your uniqueness. And then we give you the tools. We show you what other people have gone through in similar situations to get to better spots in their life. And then it's kind of on you. You know, we educate people and then you got to do your damn homework. You've been a part of the problem. You need to be a part of the solution. But mm -hmm. the things we see, yeah, we see, we see things that match anatomy books. You know, the kidney image matches the book. The femur image matches the anatomy books. You know, I have x-rays that show the same images we're seeing, sonograms that are showing the same thing. And <clears throat> Veda Austin stuff is great. You know, Dr. Moto, what Dr. Moto was doing was trying to show us how emotions affect us. Hmm. And he shows us how the emotions affect the water and things like that. And what we didn't know about Dr. Moto was he tried to do what he did with the water. He tried to do it with the blood first, but he wasn't able to do it. Hmm. So when he found out about our father's work, he was thrilled because we see emotions in the blood. It's all there. I mean, all the information, everything we need is here. All the ingredients, we, we have everything within us. It's a question of creating the right circumstances and supporting the body. It really is. It's the amazing. It's an amazing machine, if you want to call it a machine. It's an amazing. We are miracles. It's amazing what this thing can do. Got to support it. As a chiropractor, I, I work a lot with muscle testing when I'm, you know, working with patients. It's both a diagnostic tool, but also a way of, of showing them where they have functional deficits, because when there's any kind of a blockage in the spine or, or, you know, problems with muscles, you can, you can test and it doesn't respond quickly. It doesn't respond the way it should. And, and it's very, very easily overpowered. Um, and, and so I remember one of my teachers, I was at, you know, we were asking different questions about it. And at one point he said, you know, what you're really doing when you're, when you're muscle testing is you're, you're asking the, the patient, or the patient's body 
how can I be of service to you? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, I th and I thought that was a very interesting take on it because, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a powerful tool for, for helping people to understand, oh, yeah. oh wow, I, I, why can't I do that? I should be able to do that. And then, and then if they get an adjustment and that function changes after, then it's not just a placebo effect. They're like, whoa, wait a minute. I couldn't lift my leg before and now I can. It's like, that's, right. an, object, that's an objective measurement criteria that, that's a value because then they see the value of the care as well. Um, yeah. Definitely. And this is what we need as humans. You know, we, we need a little bit of that feedback. You know, we're not sure. We question ourselves. So you take some action, you get some reaction out of it. And, you know, what you do, what we did was great. At the same time, dad never really documented a lot of this. You know, the only real proof that we had that what we did work was people got better, you know, mm -hmm. the results. And it's a fun thing too, because, you know, I could tell you about terrain all day long. I know how the body works. Uh, it's awesome. So mm -hmm. I can tell you about it, but until you see that damn picture, there's only so much you hear. Yeah. And, and for people listening that are not familiar with his work, it is extremely visual. It's like me trying to talk about the, the work that I've done with the mountain or with heart stones and, and to do it with just words. It, it, it's very visual. And, and uh, my, my presentation in Anarchapulco was entirely visual. And, and I would say yours is, is the same because the, the proof is in the pudding. When you see the pictures, you know, people might initially think, oh, may, oh, yeah, you could manipulate this and fake it in some way. But I, no, you see enough of them, you realize this is actually in the blood. And but yeah. it's not really in the blood, because if it was in the blood, the blood wouldn't be able to flow. So what right. the heck are you seeing there? Yeah, so what you're seeing is essentially, I don't know, it's magic. I, I, it's I magic. Suppose. It's really to me, it's this whole information, energy matter. You know, there's information in the body that affects the energy of the experience. And what we're seeing is images in the blood that are much bigger than red cells we're taking blood from capillaries you know and right. this is a big deal for people that have seen a lot of these which are one images one cell uh -huh. wide yeah right one cell wide so the reality is the images we're seeing could not physically fit through a capillary if these images were in your bloodstream physically something would get clogged you would have a problem i mean mm -hmm. you could have a stroke mm -hmm. basically which is also interesting information for people thinking about all these ridiculous images they have seen over the last two or three years from all microscopists regarding stupidity in the world. <laughs> we'll go no more into that, but what I'll tell you, you is mean, this. You mean the CGI <laughs> photographs? Is there? <laughs> no, I mean, people are actually showing images of what I've seen for decades and saying it's other things. And, oh, right. Yeah. yeah. So the thing yeah. is this though, this is like magic to me. This is, the blood leaves the body through a capillary. One red cell can fit through the time. And basically you're getting energy becoming physically manifested based on imbalance in the body as the blood is leaving the body. You know, it's, it is like magic, but the thing is this, I mean, come on, Mike, life is, the world is, this life is magical. When you see what you see and what I see, what I've seen, we've seen magic, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, what I believe the unbelievable, you know, mm -hmm. when I see children reading with blindfolds on without using their eyes, I know there's more to this world than <laughs> what we think and what we what we think we know. Right. And so. I, wit I witnessed children doing just that in, oh, yes. in Mexico in a way that was unfakeable. Oh, yes. Don't, don't let the cat out of the bag for people listening. Uh, I'm not, I'm not Marcelina going to, was here. But... There's going to be some interesting, you're going to see the unbelievable. And it's up I've, to people whether they believe it or not. I've only had a couple of experiences of the paranormal. I mean, for me, synchronicity is a form of paranormality, right? Uh, and I've had many, many synchronicities in my life, which I, I'd like to share with, with the listeners on my channel. But as far as outside of the realm of synchronicity, I've only had two experiences in my life where... I witnessed what I could only describe as as real magic, and uh, <laughs> yeah. and that was that was one of them. So I I can't <laughs> wait until till the cat is out of the bag on that one it's because be fun. people are people are going to be really scratching their heads on on that one. Well, and this um, is part of our deal now is you know putting the wonder and the awe back in the awesomeness that is our lives. You know, everyone is so afraid of so many things. There's so many awesome things going on these days. You know, and it's really crazy. When we got together in Acapulco, it was really neat because 
uh, dude, these damn giant trees, I'm seeing them everywhere now. <laughs> you know, it's like, damn it. <laughs> Welcome to my mania. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid movie. It's like, oh, there's a giant tree. You know what I mean? Uh, but something, you know, it's like there's a regrouping. There's a gathering, you know, and I think it's Josh and I were just on with Topher the other day, you know. Oh, and, nice. Uh, I haven't seen that. It's well, he just he just recorded it yesterday, two days ago. Oh, cool. I don't even know what day today is. Um, but the thing is, we need to stay connected. You know, mm -hmm. we need what you've done, what I've done with Sam. The things that you've with connecting people is really cool. You know what I mean? So we go out, we do our things. You do this, right? I do my show, you know, and we all do our separate things. But then we get together, and something really interesting happens, right? And then we go back to our thing, you know. So it's energy. It's, it's it's awesome, but something like it's nice that you texted me and I I happen to be sitting here and it's like oh I got stuff to do and oh I missed the damn thing oh no they're on right now, like I think we need to do more of these things we need to mm. continue to connect more dots, you know it's really there's so much going on out there that if we can focus where do we put our attention right are you going to go outside and stare at that damn chemtrail which is one. 100th of a percentage of what we can be observing in our awesome experience, right? Where do we put the focus? Are we going to put our focus on creating our health or being afraid of getting, you know, infected by something? Um, but I really think it's interesting. What went on with Anarchapulco is cool. I think that music and sky is going to be nice because there's going to be another regrouping, right? But it's still You've a done, question. Of, you were there last year, weren't you? Yeah. I was there. I just showed up kind of last minute, which was unexpected for me. Um, so I didn't do any presenting or anything like that. It was awesome. Oh. It's just nice. I mean, come on. It's nice to be at a place with people like you and Sam for uh, four or five days. You know, I mean. Best parties said, ever. <laughs> well, I said this to Topher. You know, it's like I'm not the bar guy, but, it, you know, we were at Max Egan's bar every night. And it wasn't <laughs> talking about the Charger game. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And alcohol wasn't the point. No, it was, just, it was just a byproduct. Yeah, right, right. It was just uh, you had the drink just so no one harassed you and tried to get, make you take more shots. Damn it! Thank well, you. And the music, Falconer. the music it was was fun as well. It what, was all one fun. thing: uh, what, what, are they called somatids? I'm just thinking back to the blood again. Is yes. that what you, the little tiny things? So yes. I, I learned the the term pleomorphism from you. Actually, I probably learned it in chiropractic college and forgot it but you know yeah. the idea of one thing morphing into increasingly complex whatever's yeah. um yeah those little guys you know wilhelm reich talked about bions Mason, these are just just to clarify for for people these on the dark field microscope they they look like little points of light and then they do stuff and so like you see the cell and it's like this big and then, and then there will be like a little tiny thing that looks like a little satellite or something, you know, yeah. and, uh, and it's wild, the stuff you showed. Oh, it's fun. Hours of fun. For people listening, biglesonacademy.com, go check out some of our stuff. Um, it's neat. These things, what we're doing to me is such interesting, what we're all doing is such interesting cutting edge experience, you know, and I'm amazed that it's like I'm a music teacher, you know, and here I am talking about these things in the blood that help us to create who we are. They help us to decompose. They never die. All right. So the reality is when we die, these little things, they go back into the terrain. They go back into the environment, into the experience. So I know for a fact that part of us never dies. I look at this all the time in the microscope. And to me, that's kind of a big deal. You know, I mean, it's like we don't know what happens after we die, but I can tell you that part of you continues, you know, and it's and these little guys, they permeate. They've been in limestone millions of years old. They've been in uh, we've seen them in the soil and plants. Josh has looked at blood of animals. Right. So these these this is the smallest life form. And this is the Wilhelm Reich experiment. Wilhelm Reich observed grass decomposing over a period of time. And he saw these little things, the little bions coming out of the grass. And then he saw them recreate new life. So yeah, part of us never dies and creates new life. So as, as someone you know passes away, it's they, the, the physical thing is one thing, but that energetic experience I know continues. And who the hell am I? You know, it's like, I'm music teacher guy, you know what I mean? The son of Harvey Biggleson. You know what? Uh, the, 
the powerhouses in the the health freedom movement, the truth, the truth movement, the flat earthers, all, all like some of the 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 most amazing minds are musicians, and and I I have or comedians. Like I have I have mm. an like I think that the smartest people in the world are the musicians and the comedians, and and then they diversify. But but that's that's kind of their their foundation. Yeah, that's interesting. And you know what? Uh, Bear Lando said that to me once. I've said this a lot, right? I'm just a music teacher. And he would say, don't say just. Just. Like, don't, yeah. You know, and he said that. He said, you know, you know more about frequency vibration than most trained health professionals. And it's that outside perspective that can go, well, what about this? And I've done it a few times. It's like, uh, I'm no ego, but I'm kind of impressed by, with myself. <laughs> you know, the reality is this, though. It's those crazy ideas out of left field. You know, like for people listening, um, if you've got this weird thought that just, you know, I don't know, this is this it seems to make sense to me, but share it with somebody. You know, my dad was with, uh, it was Dr. Thomas Rao, who's the Paracelsus Clinic in Switzerland, who was a very big deal at a point in time. Um, not saying that at this point in time. Uh, hope on opponent, no judgments, right? Uh, but dad was with him at one point and was a little starstruck, you know, because Thomas was somebody and dad said to him, like, there was an event afterwards dinner, they were at the bar and dad's like, I'm going to, I'm going to tell him, I'm going to say it. He said, you know what, Thomas? He said, I think a thousand, I think disease, chronic disease is a thousand percent triggered emotionally. And Thomas said, me too. And dad was like, oh my God, I'm not. And he said, I think I'm crazy. I thought I was crazy. You know, the reality is look what comes from crazy people. Right. Hmm. You know, I mean, these crazy people that ended up in strange places. Well, a few years later, we realized they weren't so crazy. You know, I mean, come on, giant trees. That's crazy or not. Hmm. You know, little things in the blood that, that, you know, we don't die. That's crazy or or not. What I like about all that we do is the consistencies. You know, this is where the truth is, is we can remove inconsistencies. I don't know everything. Definitely. I don't. I know a lot about what we've done. And it's interesting, Mike, because Josh and I didn't didn't think we were. It's not that we're smart people. We just grew up in a different world. Our perspective was different. You know, Tom Cowan asked Josh once during one of our online things with him and Kaufman. He said, when did the terrain start for you? And Josh said, I've never known any different. Like, this is just how we grew up. And we've always thought we were a little weird, you know, like we speak a different language. Um, and I guess we did. So these days, people are actually interested in learning our language. It's kind of nice. You know, the terrain is like a the thing all of a sudden. Yay. And I'll tell you this, too. My dad always said this. He said he didn't think it, he wasn't sure if he was that good at what he did or that everyone else was just that bad. You know, that they're just going the total wrong direction. Western medicine, and I'll tell you this one. I mentioned this at my in my presentation. Western medicine says hepatitis is you have a virus that attacks the liver and creates inflammation, and it's hepatitis. But the reality is it's exactly backwards. The body creates inflammation to heal. It's creating inflammation. It's affecting the liver. And then you have these symptoms they call hepatitis. It's just totally bass backwards. You know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, um, there's a, you know, the, the line I come back to often is if they can get you asking the wrong questions, then it doesn't matter what your answers are. Right. And that's that's the nature of a faulty paradigm is that's that's getting you to ask the wrong questions because you're starting with beliefs that that don't actually gel with reality. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So, Isn't that interesting, huh? What questions are we asking? Right. Yeah. Well, it, you know, it's. it's I, I think when when I first got exposed to the whole, you know, possibility that the Earth might not be a spinning ball, um, I just thought of it as, wow, this is a really interesting intellectual exercise. It's something that I never thought about. I was taught that it was a super a superstition that was just stupid and. You know, and that there were all these ways to prove that it wasn't, you know, and, and the more I got into it, the more complex it got. And, uh, you know, now you've got people like Austin Witsit who are debating Ph.D. physicists and, and you know, kicking butt. 
And uh, if it's if it's that stupid, why can a flat earther take on a PhD physicist and at least hold their own? Yeah. It, it like you know, and then you get these people asking the question, well, like, well, if the you know if the Earth is flat, then why are the planets you know round? And it's like, okay, that's a <laughs> kinder that's a kindergarten question when it comes to this topic. Yeah. And most people have been so brainwashed that they can't even go into it because. Right. They don't see it as an intellectual exercise. They just see it as something, oh, this is so stupid. You know, like, yeah. why would you waste your time with that? And it's like, well, it's not actually a waste of time observing your reality and, you know, right. trying to discern if there, there are patterns and, and do, does what we were told match up with what I'm actually experiencing. Right. That was the, I think it was a Rudolf Steiner quote that Tom Cowan said, that do not negate what you perceive. So if you right. perceive it's spinning, you know, great. If you perceive it's flat, then just because some expert told you something different, you know, what is it you're supposed to do? Do you trust yourself or not? You know, do you trust what you perceive? I think that's important. And I don't know. I like what you said about being a globe skeptic. You know, my brain, I have to focus on blood and there's only so much capacity I have, you know, before my head explodes and it explodes. I have so much going on. It's like flat earth, a little tequila. Cool. We'll chat about that for a bit. You know, I think it's cool. Uh, Anna knows some pilots and <clears throat> there's something to it. Um, I know. I know a pilot who who flew for uh, Qatar and he flew the biggest planes and he's, believe, he's very much a flat earther. I believe the unbelievable. I told you, yeah, I got yeah. a friend that works in, a, in an airport and he watches the radar and he's the guy that takes the video of that thing that's out there, but not on the radar. You know, <laughs> like there's a lot of those things out there. So I believe the unbelievable part of it is it's funny is that what is a, what is of consequence to me in my life you know one thing is well you've been lied to it's like yeah i know that you know i mean from the medical thing we wrote the book on medical conspiracy go get the book mm -hmm. it's out there right so <laughs> literally lied to wrote us. the book on it. <laughs> literally <laughs> we had a medical conspiracy my dad wrote it we have proof we don't care about your health that's the guy the head of the medical board said we didn't care your patient got better my dad was brought up on charges of curing someone illegally right so i believe the unbelievable for how sure. dare hey that's, yeah, whatever. Um, but at the same time, uh, there's only so many places I can go right now. There's only so much depth my little brain can handle, you know. So uh, it was cool to be in Anarchapulco and have some of these conversations. And it was so funny because Andrew Kaufman's awesome. As I'm hanging out with him at the bar and he's telling me, he's showing me the dollar bill. It's a note of debt. Debt. You know what I'm going? Mm -hmm. So? <laughs> I, I could buy a cheeseburger with this debt, you know, like... And uh, so I get it. There are things, there's more going on than we realize. And it's still, what I think is important is what knowing what we can do about what's going on. And this is one thing I love about what we do is I can teach you things that you can try and it can change your health. You know, we can talk about the flat earth all day. I'm still not falling off of it, whether it's flat or whether it's round. Right. Yeah. Um, That's a I common appreciate... thing of, you know, people are like, oh, well, I still have to go to work in the morning. What does it matter? What, what the shape is? And, and that's, that's also, it, yeah, it doesn't, that in and of itself doesn't matter, but understanding that if, if it isn't what we're told, then yeah. the implications of that information are are all encompassing and, and, yes. and touch on so many different aspects of life the number one being discernment and and our ability to to actually discern is yeah. life important you know i mean we saw that during during the last four years if you didn't have some degree of discernment you probably got unknown things floating around in, in your bloodstream that you right. don't want there right, right. so yeah. discernment is important incredibly important i i i don't i don't argue for a particular shape i'm a globe skeptic but i i right. i um you know i definitely feel that um that it's digging into that subject i call it the skeleton key of, of conspiracy theories because when you start to dig into it you start to to connect all kinds of dots right. that otherwise wouldn't connect because you yeah. wouldn't you wouldn't realize they were related True. And that's when that's when the tapestry starts to fill in. You start to get bigger, yes. bigger, uh, a bigger vision. Well, and this is I think what's very important about it, too, is the awe, the wonderment. You know, for me to be like when I hear with you Definitely. with the giant trees, now I have a new sense of awe in my life. And it makes mm -hmm. me wonder, you know, it's not that, well, we came from aliens and we know everything. 
You know what I mean? It's like, no, 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 there's, there's a lot. So I think the, the best thing is, is having us think, you know, mm -hmm. letting us really let's to talk about these things, you know, it's not going to school and just learning what to regurgitate. It's let's think about this. Let's talk about this. I really wonder, you know, I mean, and it's neat if I think about, okay, it is flat. I wonder that's important. I think wonder is very important for us. Hmm. You know what I mean? It just brings this magical experience and the awe back into the awesomeness that is what we have going on. And I also think that's part of what's gone on is, you know, we are individual miracles. You know, what's going on in your body right now, when I look at the blood and I see white cells attaching to holograms, but the holograms aren't real. If the white cells, like I know your body's working right now on you. It's trying to fix mm. that tooth. It's trying to, you know, help you with your emotions. It's trying to align your sacrum when you fell on your butt. You know, it's it's awesome. It amazes me. You know, the uh, the lymphatic system. Wow, have you seen videos of, of the fascia, the connective tissue? Like that's crazy what's going on in there. Just what the yeah. blood does. This is anyone amazing. who's anyone who's not seen the documentary um, "Strolling Under the Skin." That's the one. Must Chills. must see it because uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the fascia is not what you thought. <laughs> it's not no. what you think. No. No, it's just it's, it's just an adhesion. It's not it's a big just deal. A it's just a connective tissue. Like they used yeah. to call the brain, you know, the glia cells, the glue cells, because they didn't know what they did. So they just called them like that's yeah. what's holding everything else together. And yeah. it's just the it's just the neurons that are doing the, the job. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. No, no big deal. Way more complex than that. Right. Shiva Shampoo wrote in the chat, he said, You guys were terrain from birth, and he just reminded me of my favorite t-shirt, which says Germs are us yep. on the front. <laughs> Did I give you one? And yes, then, I gave you one. And then on, yeah. the, on the back, it says the the microbe is nothing. The terrain yeah. is all. And, and you guys, you have one and Sam, you got one. We got, we're t-shirt buddies. Yay. Not many people have yeah. those t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was a gift from Adam. <laughs> yeah. I really, I appreciate that. You know, it's these little things when we know the germ is helping. You know, dad says life is happening for you, not to you. You know, everything is, is not a coincidence. I really appreciate all of this. You know, it's and I, I look forward to getting together with you guys again at Music and Sky. You know, there's something bigger to be said about really sharing energy together, sharing space. You know, it's neat that you're in you're in Spain right now. Right. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. The world has gotten smaller for us. You know, we've been divided and conquered, but we're doing it. I'm in Mexico. You're in Spain, Sam, California. You know, so we can do this. And the reality is, give it a few months and we get to be together. And then the thing is, the best thing after that is taking some of each other's energy back to where we got, we came from. You yeah, know? it was it was really fun because I continued on to California and then I went down to San Diego and I met with Sam again. I shared some photographs and video clips from, from those journeys. Um, but it was also frustrating because I was without my laptop and it was like three, four weeks. So I'm just finally getting to this recap that everyone else was doing days after the event and they're they're riding this high of like wow this was so much fun you know and it's like yeah. i met all these incredible people and we're connecting and sharing ideas and yeah. and uh and so you know this is like you know four weeks later yeah yeah <laughs> don't, feel, don't feel bad dude i haven't <laughs> i haven't shared anything so don't feel bad and i feel oh, like how, how dare yeah you? i i know and i've dingy little <laughs> I don't, well, I lived in the moment. You know, there was all these moments I thought at one point at the bar, I was like, you know, hey, can I take a picture, you know, with Kaufman? And he, he was like, no. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, you can totally take a picture. He was, you know, he was giving me shit. You know, I was like, oh, okay. Uh, but I feel like, wow, in the moment, we I should have shared more. I mean, I like sharing the joy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I feel like I need the assistant. You know, Sam, damn it, take pictures for me and share the damn pictures, right? <laughs> Um, well, that's well, that's one of the fun things with my, you know, because Alex Michael, conspiracy music guru, is my best friend, and and uh, so I'm often there as the documenter. So I, I'm like an extra set of hands, and so I've I've gotten so much great footage over the years that he never would have gotten if, if, if nice. it wasn't for our friendship. So, nice. um, yeah, it's it's good to have somebody there that's a, a fly well, on the wall. And I I haven't even I mean I didn't really introduce Sam properly in the beginning because people might be wondering who's the sam guy he's just sitting there yeah. he's listening all the time and <laughs> yeah. and he's not a content uh, uh, producer he doesn't have a youtube channel <laughs> and he's what i would call a shadow influencer he's like the shadow spider in the net yeah. that's connecting all the dots <laughs> and all the people together and he's like 
I think this person would go good with this group. And that <laughs> yeah. person would go good with that group. And then yeah. he makes it happen. So, you know, for a guy who's not putting out any videos or doing it, he's, he's yeah. making stuff happen. That's big. And uh, oh, yeah, well, this is especially for my too. life. So <laughs> this is important too, Sam. I mean, for all of us, you know, it's, it takes a village, right? That whole idea. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got so much going on. I'm so excited. I mean, there's so much awesomeness happening and I'm overwhelmed. I'm juggling like a damn circus clown, you know, and I got to tell you, even recently, Anarchapulco happened. It was this expansion. And then I came home and was like, whoa, what was that? And I tried to catch up for a week and then I had a retreat I did. And then it was an expansion. And then after that, crazy stuff went on. And I totally went into like contraction. You know, it's like I went out to the world and all this stuff. And I came home and went, whoa. Back to life, back to reality. Well, and then yeah. I feel back to I, routine. Well, then I feel alone. You know, we get into this grind of stuff, and I do mm. these webinars, and I have people show up. I had a few people from Anarchapulco join, and they were like, "Oh my god, like how is it you only have, you know, seventeen people showing up?" You know, we were on with Ve uh, Veda Austin. We had a chat with her. Uh, she finally she reached out. She said, "Hey, I've heard of you guys. I know. I want to know more." And we had a great conversation. And in the end, she's got images from us. She's putting it, us in her new book, which mm -hmm. is awesome. And I shared a, just a picture and people were like, oh, my God. You know, like we got, you know, it's funny because I watched some of your stuff and it's like all of a sudden there's a few new subscribers and followers on Instagram. <laughs> you know, and people are like, dude, how do you have you have no followers? Like, what the hell? It's like, yeah, you're, I know. you're like you're the best kept secret. We're busy. I, I had never heard of Ada Austin's work until I got to Mexico, and it's absolutely, you know, jaw dropping the stuff that she's doing. I, it's cool. Um, well, yeah. we're stuck in a microscope, and this is the power of everybody. Okay, no one's above or beneath anybody, right? You know what Veda's doing? She's reaching a lot of people. Emoto reached so many people. Josh and I, we're not yelling and screaming. We're just trying to, you know, keep our our, our shit together here and make sure our business works because we're brothers, and that's a really fun with family business, you know. <laughs> so at this point though it's you guys everyone's important when sam connects us i mean sam you brought don lester over to the house after music and sky that was awesome and now we have a great connection you know everyone is so important so people listening for you guys to share you know mike's stuff is important and it's these little seeds guys right. you plant one seed of doubt one seed of hope and just just throw the seeds out and see what happens you know, so I really, Sam, you're you're awesome. You're like me, which is funny. Someone said to me once, "You're the glue." It's like, is this what I put on my business card? I'm the glue. <laughs> you know, I'm the people person. I'm a people person. So, someone, <laughs> uh, Shiva, just called Sam. Uh, the, he, he, was, he said Sam is, is like the glee, the glia cells in the in the brain, <laughs> <laughs> the glue that holds it all together. It's a good uh, thing, man. I really someone I asked, it. Where's Sam? Sam is in Prague right now on I'm vacation Prague. with his family. Oh shit. So he's he's coming to us live from the old from my world. Airbnb. <laughs> nice. And someone asks, Have you yes. seen Santos? I don't know why. Has, oh no, Adam. Huh. Has Adam seen Santos? I'm assuming no, they're I they mean Santos Bonacci, but no, I'm not sure. Huh. No, I have seen very little because I spent a lot of life on the microscope, aside from teaching teaching music, you know. Uh, you'd be surprised at what I've seen and what I haven't seen. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> but show me. If I need to see something, show me, definitely. So, and I wanted to say a couple of things real quick. Uh, as you were mentioning, as I popped on Music and Sky, uh, I'm excited mm -hmm. about it. This time that I know that I'm going, uh, mm -hmm. I would love people to, to be there. You know, I want to hang out with people. I really enjoy mm -hmm. hanging out with people. Um, and it was nice at Anarchapulco, Winsome Kind, that guy Scott and Leora, the music, the musicians, awesome people. You know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to hanging out with them. I'm excited they're going to be there. Uh, when I did Anarchapulco, you know, Steve Falconer, to connect with him was a trip, you know, and I sat with these people and I said, I've heard your name. I, I have to be honest, I have no idea who you are, you know, what you talk about. Uh, but Steve and I were like, he's like my new best friend. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? He dragged me on stage. We played music. Uh, you mentioned uh, Justin. Uh, that just did the documentary that's going to be there. Uh, what's his last name? I forgot. Leslie. 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 Thank you. Justin Leslie. I met him at Music in the Sky. It was really nice to talk to him. And I connected him with my Anna. And mm -hmm. it's nice because he talks about her. You know, he says what she talks about makes more sense than what anybody's saying mm -hmm. as far mm -hmm. as what's going on. Yeah, you know? I haven't. I mean, I mentioned she gave a great talk, but I didn't talk at all about her talk. Uh, maybe you'd like to say a few words because she's she's no, doing sure. incredible work as well, and it's it's distinct from from your you and your family's work. 
Yeah. She's, she's got her own stuff going on. She's a, she's a superhero. I mean, she's got videos with over a million views. She was one of the top 10 liars in all of whatever we call the pandemic experience in all of Europe, you know, um, top 10, what liars. Like she, she was, was yeah. uh, I mean, she made the dirty dozen list or what? She was, yeah, she was, she was oh. targeted. She was targeted. She, there were death threats and shit like that. So oh, shit. she had a, like Mercola, Kelly Brogan, Mercola's uh, wife, Aaron health, nut news. Yeah, Anna that's in was the States. on that list. On no, also? she was, she was in the European list. Oh, the European list. Okay, but that's still like the ultimate badge of, of honor, man. Yeah, well, and this if, is if the, you make those lists, you're obviously yeah. you're obviously making waves and <laughs> yeah, doing good stuff. No, she knows what she's doing. Well, and I'll tell you what she just did. Uh, she's so thrilled with Justin. She says this guy is so brave, and he's smart. He's not stupid. Uh, she took his documentary. She just translated it into Spanish. Um, like she did the voiceover for the whole thing. So she's getting that to the Spanish speaking community, which is really nice. Awesome. And this is important too. You know, Anna's a superhero in a world I never knew existed. There's more Spanish speaking people in this world than English speaking people. You know this, right? Hmm. So Anna is a PhD in biomedicine. She's a master's in engineering. She worked in a nanobiotechnology laboratory for years. She's the only one in the whole pandemic experience out of anyone talking that I have come across that has actually worked in a nanobiotechnology laboratory. Mm -hmm. So if, as far as I'm concerned, she's the only one I will listen to in relation to any nanotechnology. And I think the same should be for the rest of you out there. Okay. I'm not mm -hmm. telling you what to do and how to think, but I want to know from someone that's had experience mm -hmm. and no one else has who is sharing anything nanotechnology related except for Anna. So that says one thing about her. Uh, but she's the electrical experience of the body. So she's lectured, she's shared stage with Bruce Lipton and Joe Dispenza and things like that. And she talks about her initial PhD was on doing an electrical antibiotic. And then she realized that's not how things work. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, the electrical experience of the body, you know, she definitely can talk to you. If you want to question my work, my scientist girlfriend will tear you apart. <laughs> she can tell you all <laughs> the science behind what it is that is going on, you know, with us, you know, the electrical charges with the cells in relation. It's to always good to have a bodyguard. Oh, it's hilarious. <laughs> she, yeah, she'll protect me. <laughs> um, but she's she's done real research. You know, she spent time in laboratories. So she has real, real, real experience. She's done tens of thousands of scans with the BioWell device. The inventor wrote the foreword to her book. She worked at Shaw Wellness, one of the most well-known famous clinics in all of Europe. Uh, her patients were sheiks and shahs and princesses and World Cup soccer players. So, you know, after tens of thousands of scans, she has seen patterns. And what's nice about her is when we met her, uh, one of her friends had a health issue and Josh and I did the blood. And way, the way we came about this case blew Anna's mind. She was like, with all my devices and all my knowledge, I could not have gotten to the conclusion that you guys came to as quickly as you did. Or maybe at all. So she really is awesome support for what we do. And her she's most, one of the most wonderful ladies I've ever met. I, you, you really I, scored there. You lucked out. <laughs> I, I still wonder how that happened. <laughs> I just I'm just I'm I'm just bummed. We were we were basically neighbors. We were living within 30, 40 minutes of each other for a couple of years at, at Spain. And, yeah. and we didn't know each other then. That's yeah. a, that was a drag to find out. But. It's I, you know what? I, I, I got to think though that the universe, it almost happened, but there was a timing thing, right? So mm -hmm. we're connected now. We'll see mm -hmm. what happens next, right? Mm -hmm. But I appreciate you asking about her. There's a whole other world out there, people. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. when. Yeah. People... And, and for people, you know, again, the restream on Anarchapulco. It's a it's a one time fee. It's I, it's not very expensive. It's a five five days of conference, and there's no expiration date on it. And the you won't be disappointed if you go through the speakers' presentations one by one. It's really it's really worth it. Yeah. Um, oh, I wanted to let you know also my you know Clinic Buddy. You asked me about Clinic Buddy. Oh yeah. And and uh, it just so happens my 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 buddy that that I co-founded the company with. Uh, he came down and visited with his son uh, last week. 
Oh. And I meant I mentioned your stuff and I mentioned your work. So he's he's interested to know more and he, <sighs> he could possibly he could possibly help you with the, the please, database. Please, please, God, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so that he, he he might be he might be the, the guy you, you need to talk to. All right. So cool. I'll I'll put you guys in touch. Please. Um thank you. Yeah. Uh, we've been going for three and a half hours. That was totally unexpected, but <laughs> not not if you know my channel and you know my live streams, actually. I tend to get on a roll. I can go I can go this long just by myself without even having a bunch of wonderful guests. I, I can't believe all the people who showed up today. It was awesome. It was amazing. Um, nice. awesome. And uh, yeah, oh, I just I had two things I was gonna say. One, someone mentioned Santos. Because he's apparently pretty close to you. He's in Mexico. Santos Bonacci. Um, he's he's um, Mr. Astrotheology. He had a channel with 300,000 subs that uh, got yanked. Um, he kind of had a conniption fit and said a bunch of stuff he shouldn't have. And uh, <laughs> and so they, they, they took him out. Um, I'm surprised they didn't take him out a lot sooner with all the stuff he'd been saying for years. He's definitely one of the OGs when it comes to... Um, true thing and um has has um yeah he's definitely somebody to Please. look into and maybe connect with um somebody introduced then, me yeah and then we were talking about uh musicians and i just was reminded of again steve falconer who's also a music teacher and he's not a doctor and he's not you know he's just a guy who mm -hmm. who's interested in stuff and asks questions you're not supposed to ask and now he's got videos that are basically you know turning virology on its uh, you know inside out upside down and throwing it out basically um and you know he's he's connected with and is collaborating with numerous phd you know doctors and uh and doing incredible work so just because you don't have letters after your name doesn't mean you can't make an impact and uh, and send ripples throughout the construct creation <laughs> definitely, definitely. I support that. So maybe this is a good time to, unless you guys have something else you want to, you want to add before we sign off. I'm just happy I got to come to the party. Yeah. Even though the party was ending. <laughs> no, oh man, you, this is great. I'm so glad you, I, we, we were just about to close it up when you, when you came in and this is, this is definitely worth, worth it in every way. So. Cool. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm psyched. good stuff. Good stuff, guys. Awesome to see. You. I'm going to go eat some tacos, I think. I'll eat one for you guys. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't need tacos for a while. I'm still tacoed out after Mexico. As, <laughs> a, as, a, veg, as a vegetarian, that was like my uh, only option for a week straight. So. <laughs> that's right. I forgot. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I'm just kidding. I had tacos yesterday, actually. I, oh, I, really, I really did. So <laughs> awesome. Never, yeah. <laughs> Well, guys, uh, let's say, and, and I haven't, I've tried to interact with the chat as much as possible. I'm not so good with, you know, running a stream and, and interacting with the chat, but, uh, you know, we still got 160 people watching. It's been, it's been uh, wonderful to have you all along. Mm -hmm. I hope it, I hope you enjoyed it. And, um, and yeah, we'll do, we'll do some more collabs. Um, you know, go, go, I, I'd like to have you on and go into more depth and you can show, show pictures uh, for your work. Cause, um, it's so visual. Yeah. The right best, on. one of the best comments that I ever had, you know, re regarding the tree thing and the, 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 the Titan mountain and all that stuff is, um, your videos are stronger than psychedelics because, <laughs> because they don't wear off. <laughs> nice, nice. The wonder, the wonder continues. The awe. Good stuff, man. Yeah. Right on, guys. Well, I'm gonna hit the hit the button here. Thanks, thanks so much for coming. It was wonderful Lovely. to you. for you to be here, Sam and and Adam. And until mm -hmm. next time, sounds great. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Ciao. <laughs>